<laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, I'm so close to the corner. Oh, no. Remy, thank you very much for the super. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, everyone, for renewing your memberships. Remy, for the 20 gifted. Thank you so much. Welcome back to Dream Penis, everybody. This game really surprised me yesterday when I played it. Um, not yesterday, last week. When I played it last week, this game really, really caught me off guard. I was expecting to be like, oh, ha, ha. You know, like, funny, funny, funny dating game for dads. And I was like, that sounds fun. And it is fun. But surprisingly, not only is it fun, it's also very heartfelt and extremely well written with great characters and a lot of very hot men in it. So I've been really excited to, to pick this one back up. Thank you, Nana. Thank you, Sal. Thank you so much, guys, for the super... Okay. Michiko, thank you very much. So last time, for those of you who do not remember or perhaps were not here, here's a little recap for you. Um, my man of choice is this guy, Robert. Um, he's a whiskey addict and uh, a seeming sort of closed book. He, uh, you know, he only wants to have sex with you. But if you refuse, he seems to get a little bit sort of more interested in you. And then we had a really lovely date last time where he, um, where we went and we threw stones at stop signs and then caused vandalism to happen in the nearby area. Um, and then once that was done, we went to the movies and he was like, you need to watch better movies. And I was like, oh, he's perfect. So today I'm going to try finishing Robert's arc, his ending, his route. And then once that's finished, we're going to try moving on to Joseph because even though he's not exactly my type, I'm very curious about his character. Very curious about what's going on with him. So we're going to see what happens there. So continue. We finish the Robert date. We're going to move on. Thank you, Cello. So handsome today. Aw, I think you're handsome today. In like the Jane Austen sort of Georgian sense where women were often called handsome as well. Yuki, thank you very much. Kendra, thank you so much as well for the super. Thank you so much, everybody. I gotta read these. Thank you, Meow Bing, very much. You're handsome, Pei Yin. Thank you, Swing. All right, let's go. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I, t I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda! She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. I just thought you want this big old envelope. Oh, we've seen this already. We've seen this already. This is the this is her getting accepted into college. Okay. So again, anyone who wasn't here last time, this is our daughter, Amanda. Um, my husband, with which I adopted Amanda, has sadly since passed away. Um, and we're out on the prowl looking for a new man. And uh, she's a prospective art student um, who, in this moment, uh, has just received uh, an invitation to join a college for photography. And she's very excited. Meow. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil wrap burritos. Could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. This scene was really cute. I love this one. You know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. Uh, yeah. Meow. Yeah, we already done that. We already done all this. We already done all this. Welcome. What are we naming the husband? I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, we got a message from Amanda. Hi, Vox, it's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day, Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see you've signed up for Dad Book. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on Dad Book? Why, Vox, I never weaved on each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me for your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for daughter? Though I am, of course, flattered you should buy Amanda more things. Amanda, you know I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait, no. Wow, I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is gold. <laughs> I remember this part. This is really funny. I declined to comment. Cool. Conversation over. All right, so is this the one? This is the tea party. Hmm. Okay, that's, thank you very much. <laughs> so this is the tea party. Late. I'm worried that if I don't take this, we won't get the date with Robert and Craig. Hmm. Also, one, something somebody pointed out yesterday is that I didn't look at the other dad's profiles. I, only, I just beelined it straight for Robert. So let's read these. So this is Craig. Dad of three, business entrepreneur and fitness enthusiast. Juggling work, family, and fitness is a tough gig, but someone's got to do it. 
On a Friday night, you're most likely to get one last good cardio session in. If you had one thing to take with you to a desert island, what would it be? A box of energy bars. What are your turn-ons? A sub six minute mile. What did you want to be when you grew up? A beer pong world champion. What's your favorite movie genre? Buddy cop movies forever. What's your ideal date? Scaling a huge dangerous mountain for fun. What do you never leave home without? An extra tube of energy gel. I spent a lot of time thinking about my mild time used to be so good. What happened? I peaked. <laughs> the last one was really funny for Robert as well. He's like, you ever stare into the eyes of a rabbit animal? Like, really stare. <laughs> Robert Root is my favorite. I'm excited to see what happens. Craig! Thanks, Italian love cake and you. you. All right, let's have a look at Matt. Avid music enthusiast, passionate coffee drinker, you can find me most days selling up bean juice over at the coffee spoon or hanging out at the park with my amazing daughter. Hit me up about 80s no-wave music. On a Friday night, you're most likely to perfect my cold brew setup. One drip at a time, baby. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? Fine tunes to pass the days away. What are your turn-ons? Multi-instrumentalism. What did you want to be when you grew up? A barista, weirdly enough. What's your favorite movie genre? Shit with subtitles. Nice, he's into foreign films, okay. What's your ideal date? We go to the animal shelter and seriously consider adopting a cat. <laughs> That's great. What do you never leave home without? My headphones, both in-ear and over-ear, just in case. Okay, I don't wear both e types of earphones, but I, I get upset if I leave the house without my headphones. If I'm alone and I'm walking outside, I'm, I'm always listening to music, like every single time. Trust that if I'm somewhere without my headphones while I'm outside, I have most likely either, f um, if, if I forget them and I'm going to be late, I will literally go back inside to get them and then I will be late inevitably. You know, the only reason I would go out without them is if I, is if I forgot to charge them. So a lot of time thinking about where did writing commas into song titles come from and where did it go? Do we all just agree that it's a bad idea? Hmm. I kind of like it, but fair enough. Oh, Brian. Hey, I'm Brian. I spend most of my days hanging out with my awesome daughter and thinking up new ways to grow things. If you like fashion, then we'll get along. On a Friday night, I'm most likely to see just how slowly I can cook a piece of brisket. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? Ah, it'd be my fishing pole. My turn-ons are a keen understanding of steak cuts. What did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, I wanted to be a fireman. What's your favorite movie genre? Romantic comedies. Oh, he's perfect. What's your ideal date? Deck building. What do you never leave home without? My portable fishing pole. <laughs> he likes to fish. He's the dadliest dad of them all. I spend a lot of time thinking about how my daughter is smarter than I am. Aww. I kind of want to do Brian's route as well, because I feel like the whole thing of him showing off about his daughter might be a way of him compensating for things that he's failed to achieve in his own life, you know? Like a lot of parents who live vicariously through their overachieving children. Thanks, Yuki and Sudakula. Thank you very much. All right, Red Robert, Damien. How do you do? I have finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would li ever like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, the inevitability of our own demise, or black cats, please send me a letter. <laughs> Who said budget vox? Nah, leave this man alone. He's very handsome. On a Friday night, I'm most likely to listen to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my newest specimens. Interesting. I like true crime. I like true crime as well. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, it would be a coffin. <laughs> what are your turn-ons? Pronouncing bosom correctly. Bosom. Bosom. Pr pronouncing bosom correctly. What did you want to be when you grew up? A bat. He clearly has not changed. What's your favorite movie? Foreign art house horror. Oh. Perhaps this is a man I should get to know. What's your ideal date? It's night. We're at an industrial dark wave club in Berlin. The music drums to the beat of our hearts. Oh, he's very romantic. What do you never leave home without? An upside down cross. I spend a lot of time thinking about morality salience. Pfft, mortality salience. That said morality and I was like, damn. Here it is, thank you very much. I've forgotten the atrocities you committed against Damien. It's funny! It's funny! Listen, if we get seriously into this man, maybe I'll give him a new voice, but maybe I'll just tone down the Dracula, right? You know? Because, I mean, he's a larger-than-life character. He's a larger-than-life character. Surely he should have a larger-than-life voice. 
You guys truly saying you wouldn't be attracted to a guy with a voice like that? Hugo Vega, middle school teacher, high school teacher, writer of scholarly articles on 18th century literature for various esteemed publications. If you're on here to tell me that my son put a cherry bomb in your trash, I know, and I'm sorry. On a Friday night, I'm most likely to brew some strong tea and paint my miniatures. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, it'd be a remembrance of things past by Marcel Proust. What are your turn-ons? Muscles. <laughs> Straight to the fucking point. Fair enough. What did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a movie star. What's your favorite movie genre? Documentaries on art history. What's your ideal date? Each of us read a different book on opposite sides of the couch in comfortable science. That is a really nice idea for a date. That's really, really nice. Like, very, very occasionally, like, you know, finishing a chapter and being like, oh, this is really good, and then kind of discussing what you've been reading. That sounds really relaxing. Thanks, Kendra. Just saying, uh, thank you, Ratboy. Just saying, somewhere on Twitter, there's a pic of my friend as David Bowie and the other friend as Damien. <laughs> <laughs> now, Damien's the kind of character I would cosplay, definitely. Robert's the kind of character I would dress like ordinarily. Metalicious. With how this is going, you should just try all routes. I'm tempted. This game is really fun. What do you never leave home without? My glasses. Actually, I forget them at home a lot. He's not wearing them right now. I spend a lot of time thinking about worry. I worry that people who are against e-readers are more in love with the idea of books than actually reading them. Interesting concept, isn't it? You know. Is there a value to a physical book? Well, really, the value to a physical book is preservation of media rather than um, an ebook where, yes, you can read anything and they're a really, you know, convenient thing to have. But the problem with an e-reader is that the books are stored digitally. If that data is erased, those books are lost forever. You know, that becomes lost media. It's the same argument for celluloid film versus digital film. I mean, the thing about celluloid film is that it does, you know, it does decrease with time. And so digital film becomes... Digital film was for a long time, like, sort of the answer to celluloid degrading in value and becoming, you know... And sort of fading so that we there are a lot of films made sort of in the late 18 late late 1800s early 1900s that weren't well preserved because of course celluloid is uh, destroyed by harsh sunlight you know over a long period of time and some of them have been you know some of them are caught up in fires and there are films from you know the early 1900s that just don't exist anymore that you can't see because you know it's such an imperfect way of storing data and so digital for a long time was seen as the perfect way of storing film and yet Unfortunately, what we're seeing now is that some films that are made digitally are no longer accessible. Case in point, recently um, there was a Netflix, I can't remember if it was a Netflix film or series, but it was essentially just removed from Netflix in, in perpetuity, out of nowhere, you know, purely, I believe, as for tax reasons. And so because it was never given a physical release, only ever available online in a digital format, that series and that film is now lost to time, right? So it's an interesting idea. I, I feel that I feel that all, you know, all works of art should be preserved in some way that's sort of perpetual and permanent, but we have to wonder with who we're giving the power to control this media to, you know, how long will it be preserved for? I don't know. Interesting, interesting thought. Uh, sort of thought process from Hugo. That makes me want to pursue his route even more. And now Joseph, who will likely come next after Robert today. Voted Maple Bay's number one youth minister for five years running, living in my hometown with my beautiful wife and our four amazing kids. If I'm not in church, you can catch me out on the open water, setting sail on, on the seas of adventure. I love playing guitar and crushing my kids at Candyland. On a Friday night, I like to lead the, lead the community in a fun mixer. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? It'd be my sixth string. What are your turn-ons? My loving wife. Hmm. What did you want to be when you grew up? A ship captain. What's your favorite movie genre? Feel-good movies. What's your ideal date? Lovely night on the town. Lovely night out on the town with my wife. With my wife. <laughs> I never leave the home without, a, without the good book, and I spend a lot of time thinking about how I can be a better man, husband, and father. Seemingly a perfect man, but there must be something that lies beneath the surface. Thank you, Leo Shao and Robert Greer for the super, and thank you so much to Rachel for the gifted. All right, let's hmm, let's go on this next date with Robert. You ever really look into a rabbit animal's eyes? Let's try this again. Mm. 
I got a really massive new water bottle. I had a lot of fun with Robert last time we hung out, but I'm beginning to wonder if he's dodging me. I've tried messaging him a few times, and Dadbook says he hasn't even read them. I haven't even seen him come out of his house, actually. I decided to send him one last message, figuring that this will produce the same result. Ah, thank you very much for the super. Hey man, don't know where, where, where you've been, but we should grab a drink soon. I walk away from my computer because at this point, I know he's not messaging me back anytime soon. I linger in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on work, and the house is relatively clean. Maybe I should do something nice for Amanda. Ah, I'll bake her favorite pie. I root through the pantry and pull out all the ingredients. This is an old family recipe that I used to make with my grandmother when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a long time ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to bake it. Uh, is this the one where we make the cherry pie? Yeah, we've seen this already. Let's try with more cherries this time. Oh, it's more cherries. Duh. Yeah. What? Pies are an objective-based confection. What are you trying to get out of me? <laughs> Amanda, I have terrible news for you. I'm actually a pro skateboarder, an aspiring astronaut, and bank robber. This lifestyle is calling me back, and I must go. One last job. You know how it is. The pie was the only way I knew how to tell you. Well, I appreciate the gears we spent together, but a trade-up is a trade-up. Remember me when you're kicking your feet up in Ibiza. Thanks for all the pie. We share a cordial handshake. I wait a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on a rack to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig into it before it's ready. Huh. What? Does it look kind of weird to you? Oh, that's just me taking artistic license on what cherry pie means to me emotionally. The rest of the evening trickles by. We eat dinner, I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications, and we both start getting ready for bed. I decide to check Dad book one last time before I climb into bed. Still nothing from Robert. Hm. I hope he's okay. I turn out the lights and lie down. Hey. Hey. Vox. Hey. Hey, Vox. Hey, I'm outside. Come outside. Oh, what is that? I was just on the verge of falling asleep. I climb out of bed and try to identify the source of the dinging. My computer screen illuminates the dark room. I walk over to it, ready to turn it off, when I notice what's happening on screen. Don't make me honk. I'll honk. Get out of here. He's in his car. You going on a road trip? Mmm. I look out my window and, sure enough, there's Robert leaning up against his pickup truck in my driveway. Mmm. Thanks, Lily, for the super. Imagine we all we almost lost Toy Story 2. You're right. It was a random coincidence that someone had an earlier copy of the film at home. I open my door and try to figure out what's going on. Hey. Hey? Wanna hang? I was kind of sleeping. That's no fun. Come hang out. I would argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't have to be anywhere in the morning. Might as well live a little. Sure. Cool. You plan on going out like that? I look down and realize that I am, in fact, not wearing pants. I mean, I don't mind. Right, one second. <laughs> I run inside and throw on my going out pants, shoes, and a jacket. I grab my keys and meet Robert back outside. Ready? Ready. Hop in. I jump into the passenger seat of his old red pickup truck. I have to move before a few empty cigarette packets and gas station receipts out of the way before I can sit. Robert silently starts the car and we drive out of the cul-de-sac. Hey. You like Tom Waits? Tom who? I actually don't know who that is. Wait, who? Oh shit, wait. No, I didn't save! Fuck! We can go back. Wait, 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 wait. Robert Date 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We it auto saved. It auto saved. It's fine. Love Tom Waits. Yeah, I love. Before I can answer, Robert turns up the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits, all right. He lights a cigarette and cracks the windows. We drive together in silence. So, where are we going? Robert doesn't respond. Robert? Oh, I heard you. Hang on, let's save real quick. He still doesn't answer my question. I look out the window and notice that Robert's take taking us to the highway. I twiddle my thumbs. Well, whatever I've gotten myself into, it looks like I'm in it for the night. I settle into my seat and watch streetlights pass by. I glance over to Robert, who's driving intently. He looks tired, as he always does, but there's something a bit more there that I just can't place. Hmm. Are you okay is a bit much. I don't know if that's... Alright, hang on, save. Are you okay is a bit much. He's not gonna like that. He's gonna be like, hey, what the, f hey, what, what the fuck is your problem? Could I tip? I know I missed that. Thank you for the gifted. I like your car. It kind of seems like you... I'd say we just say nothing. Like, give him, give him his space, you know? Yeah, see, there you go. I remember what Robert said about hating small talk and decide to keep my mouth shut. 
He notices me staring. Stop looking so nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm a little nervous. Please hang on, we're almost there. Almost where? I have no idea where we are. I think we're moving at a slight incline, but I'm not so sure. We eventually come to a stop. Robert gets out of the car and I sit for a second, unsure if he wants me to get out too. What are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car. Robert sits on the bed of his truck and pats the space next to him. Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me. It's one of these fucking make-out reef from Spongebob. I sit down and take in the view. We're on a hill overlooking the city skyline against the bay. The cool night air rustles some trees near us as the lights blink in the distance. Off to the side, I can see an entrance to a dense forest. Man, it's all so gorgeous. This is where I come to masturbate. <laughs> what? I'm kidding, what's wrong with you? This is my little spot where I come to think. It's nice. You can see the whole city from up here. Really gives you some perspective. Robert reaches behind him and pulls something out from under his jacket. It glints in the moonlight and I suddenly realize what it is. Oh shit, that's a knife! Oh, please don't stab me. Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a small piece of wood. Please don't stab me with that either! Robert takes the knife to the piece of wood and starts carving at it. Oh, I breathe a very audible sigh of relief as Robert looks at me sideways. Did you think I was going to stab you just now? What? No. I hate to break it to you, but I did, in fact, bring you out here to harvest your organs. Play along. Yeah, well, you think you caught me in your trap, but I knew. For years, I've been putting the most vile junk food in my body in preparation for this day. Come at me, fiend. Come at me, friend. Reap what you will. Two steps ahead of you at all times. That's how I operate. See, I knew he would fucking love that. <laughs> Nothing gets past you, huh? Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a folding knife that he opens and hands to me. I'm gonna warn you. Last guy I had a knife fight with lost three fingers because he didn't know the eight basic rules of knife fighting. You're familiar, correct? I honestly can't tell when you're kidding. I'm so many levels. <laughs> I'm so many levels of irony deep. I've forgotten what humor is. <laughs> Oh my god, he's me. Holy shit, he's me. He's forgotten- he's forgotten what a joke is. <laughs> I'm so many levels of irony deep, I've forgotten what humor is. <laughs> he and I laugh. You ever whittled before? Considering I'm not a grandpa, no. What do you mean by that? Well, I just thought that you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security check. Vox. I'll have you know that whittling is a time-honored tradition enjoyed by both young and old alike. That you're dismissing it before you've even tried it speaks volumes about your character. However, as I've gotten to know you for some time and have come to think of us as friends, I'm willing to attribute it to ignorance instead of malice. What I'm trying to say is, go get that stick. Robert motions to a good-looking stick on the ground, perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. The most important thing to remember while whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you cut against the grain, the whole wood is going to splinter. Isn't the most important thing safety? No. Getting there it comes with the territory. Look at my damn hands. I look at his damn hands. They're calloused and covered in little white scars. They're very nice hands. You can't make a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. <laughs> Knife that wood. This is a mini game? Oh! <gasps> Interesting. Oh, hell yeah. That's a good start. Uh, it's a sh it's a sharp stick. It's a pen- uh, it's a it's pencil- it's a pencil. Good luck writing with that. You made a highly dangerous weapon. Let's go. Brum. Yeah. Oh, now we have made a popsicle stick. Ooh. Tell me about this one. It's a popsicle stick. A tongue depressor. I forgot about those. Flatworm. Flatworm! Yeah. Brrrum. Let's see what we got this time. Visualize the sculpture within. Ooh, toothpick. No toothpick. What's the story here? Something to make me look tougher. It's working. You think you could take me in a fight? Probably. 
We've decided I'm too chicken shit to propose, thanks, but waiting to see what she's planning to do. Oh, well, that's okay. It's a difficult thing to do, and you must wait until you're ready. So don't worry about it, okay? Appreciate the update. I'm invested in your guys' story now. Egg. Mm. What's this? Chicken nugget. <laughs> Please don't eat that. You made Robert uncomfortable. No! I made a chick chicken nugget. Chimkin nugget. Um. What is that? Nice form. What's it supposed to be? It's you, you big dummy. <laughs> Louisiana. Good old Louisiana. Beautiful place. Got stabbed there once, you know. What was it, Kentucky? You made a Louisiana! Uh, upstate New York? Yeah, I'm from Utica, and I never hear- I never, I've never heard anyone use the phrase, Dream Daddy. Oh, 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 no, it's an Albany expression. Interesting, what do we have here? Chopstick lefty, chopstick righty, or chopstick ambidextrous? Never thought of chopsticks as being specific. Mm, ambidextrous. It's a stick. Chopstick ambidextrous. It's all about it's all about the meaning you apply to these things. <gasps> Big wood. Ooh. Do you think he's compensating for something? See what happens. Ooh. Ooh, making something pretty. You keep this up, you'll be a whittling pro in no time. What is that? It looks like a duck. Maybe next you can carve up some wooden bread crust to feed him. Cool duck! Hell yeah, look at this little guy. Oh, another big one. <laughs> Horsey! Oh my god, we're so good at whittling! What the fuck? How did we get that good that fast? Beautiful handiwork. What do you call it? Big old dog. Spirit of the Mustang, so horsing to big old dog. I think you're taking some artistic license there, but I can appreciate that. <laughs> it's the he I've made that dog. Made that dog, and I turned to Robert and I put it in him. Hey. Um Water. Robert and I sit in silence for a while, carving our pieces of wood. I think I'm getting the hang of this. It's actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on. He's carving a smaller wooden knife? Ah! While I'm distracted, the knife slices into my thumb. Blood gushes all over my little wooden carving. Uh, Robert is lost in carving and doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Uh, Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. Robert finally looks over. He reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does this guy keep in there? And pulls out a red bandana. He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the truck, and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit. Robert carefully wipes all the blood off my hand, then swipes a bit of antiseptic onto the cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Make sure to keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching, and... And a little sexy. A little sexy? Mm. I guess I'm a real whittler now. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. Wait, what? What's attracted to the smell of blood? Cryptids. <laughs> Tons of them out here, you know? Cryptids? Like Mothman and stuff? Mothman is bullshit, but yeah, this town's a hotbed of cr uh, for a, hot a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. You're joking. Oh, how I wish I were. I'm a skeptic myself. Or at least I thought I was. There are things in these woods that we can't possibly comprehend. I think about my entire time in this city. Aside from the occasional stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. You ever hear of the Dover Ghost? I don't think so. Oh. Well, let me tell you a story. I... I was out in the woods here on a weekend camping trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy, but she's a big pup. Pitbull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. I need some salad, too. Betsy gets to pee whenever she wants. All good stuff. Second day, I get the idea into my head that I can hide deeper into the woods. Probably against my better judgment, but hey, 
We're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start marching in the morning. It gets a little late. We set up camp. But it's different this night. Real quiet. I can't hear the birds, the crickets, squirrels, nothing. Dead silent. And then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life. Right outside my tent. Me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing. And nobody's there. And then there's this feeling. Not sure if, not sure if I can quite describe it. I know someone, something, is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. When she's scared, I know that I should be too. And then I see it. In the distance. A man, but if something didn't know what a man was supposed to look like, made it. It just looked wrong. Big, arms too long for its body. Black eyes. It just stood there and stared at me. Then, it disappears. I hear one yelp from Betsy, and I turn around to check on her. She's gone. In the thin air. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night. And I don't think I've slept right since. We're gonna play along. Wow. Robert. I'm so sorry. They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, nights just like tonight, you can hear the howl of the Dover ghost. A howl resonates through the woods. <gasps> it doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something makes my skin crawl. Chat broke for a while. I noticed that distracted me. Huh? Okay, Robert. Real funny. I turned to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. You're messing with me, right? Really? I was messing with you. I was messing with you. Up until literally just now. I totally made that camping story up. I strained my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see where the howl originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so far away, I can barely make out a shape. It looks human, but it's dragging something. Uh, do you see that? We should go. Really? What the fuck? We're not even going to investigate! Mm. Not even going to see what happens! Oh, hell no! Robert and I slowly back away and get into the truck. He turns off his headlights and we make a slow crawl away, back onto the road. I'm too scared to look back. What was that? The Dover ghost, I guess. I chuckle nervously. This time he doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on a wildlife preserve. Yeah, that's the story we'll tell ourselves. We sit in silence for a little while longer, the fear of whatever that was slowly subsiding as we get closer to the city. Thanks for coming out. This was fun. I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. I had to be around somebody. You doing okay, man? Robert thinks for a second and lights another cigarette. I don't know. Been doing a lot of thinking. He takes a long drag. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in this sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after these things that I thought would make me happy that I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. Robert stops. I wait for him to finish his thought, but he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Or maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm as unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say. I remember all of the times in my life when I've been sad, and there's a great many of them, but there was always a light at the end of the tunnel, something I held on to that kept me going. But there's something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. Maybe we deserve to be eaten by the Dover ghost. Maybe that's why it's here. The Dover ghost feeds off your sadness, my sadness. Hunts us in the night. Honestly, it makes sense. I was, I was, I was trying to get around. I'd just be devoured for my sins. 
Yeah. That sounds pretty great, actually. It was a joke. I'm turning the car around. We're going back. Excuse me? Robert slams on the brakes and puts the car in reverse. Robert, wait. He stops the car again. You know what? I thought about it. It's not my time yet. I haven't finished watching the Criterion Collection. God, he's so perfect! They just keep adding stuff to it. But... Thanks, Fox. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to close the passenger door, I realize that I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. You hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. Robert smirks and then pulls away. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one over from mine. He gets out and waves. That's cute. I tiptoe into the house, careful not to wake Amanda up. Whoa, where'd you come from? I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, uh, Robert w woke me up to go cryptid hunting. You know the Mothman is bullshit, right? Amanda, like... You know what? It's fine. Ah. I finally decide to go to bed. <laughs> Take complete. Give me that S rank. Give me that S rank. Hey! Fuck. Oh man. Alright. Alright, good enough. I didn't hoist- Oh, I should have hoisted that rag! I don't know about Tom Waits or whatever his name is. I'm not knowledgeable about these things. You guys heard me in the collab with Ross where they were asking me to guess the names of songs. I don't know shit. <laughs> it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but can't quite make out what it is. Ah, oh, this is the part where she's crying over the boys who have made us sad. Leave her alone. Did something happen? No, nothing happened! Go away! Alright, I'll leave you be. Back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. I've got to give, some, go give her some time. I have no idea what has her so upset. She seemed totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry. But I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would only have made her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through all sorts of awful things she could be dealing with. And more than anything, more than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. Mm. Morning, madam. Morning. So, anything big going on at school today? No. Okay. Need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster up, leave her up, and takes a freezer burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh. Okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully, this blows over and things are back to normal soon. Jen Tan, thank you for the gift, Dad. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda, Amanda and I hanging out on a wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she'd get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then, she finally started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. And then I took a for ice cream, and it was like nothing had even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decide that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I'm going to make it the cake, yeah. And I remember this scene. Oh, okay. hmm. The cute, adorable cake. Uh, the best friend? Yeah, yeah there we go. Oh. I have to save before these choices, because I, I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, the gossipy one. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Bada -boom, bada -boom, bada -boom. I cannot believe that. She's talking about her friends, everything's going wrong. It's not dumb. You're not dumb. Not all friendships last. Real friends don't do that. That banger thing to say about that. Real friends do not treat you that way. 
Bada bing, Amanda is happy and safe, and we can get back to what matters, which is having sex with men. Stella Anderson, thank you very much for the super. Don't worry about being late, it's all good. And Vore, thank you for five gifted. Okay. Hmm. Now we've got Craig here, and this should be the one about going on the thing with Robert. I wonder if now that we're closer with Robert, it will be different. Hey buddy, I have a favor to ask. Robert invited me over for dinner. And I know it's kind of a faux pas to invite another bro, but I've got, I've known the guy for years and I still can't get a good read on him. And I know it's going to be super awkward if I go by myself. Will you please come with me? I love food. I especially love food that's free. And I don't know why you're so sweaty over cooking, but sure. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm down. Thank you! I really hope that's a sweat of relief. It's got to be different. There's no way he's going to be weird about it now that we're so close. Then again, he's not going to fundamentally change as a person overnight. Does he know something about Robert that I don't? I hurry, I hurry up and reply before my dad brain can work itself into a paranoia spiral. Yeah, dude, I'm down. <laughs> Craig! Craig's waiting on my porch, bottle of wine in hand. Bro! Vox, boy, am I glad to see you. Likewise, man. Classy of you to bring wine. Oh, it's not wine. It's sparkling apple cider. Robert literally has a wine cellar, so I think he's good. Wow. Or at least I think he has a wine cellar. I'm genuinely unsure if he was telling the truth or not. I can never tell with him. Thank God it's not just me. I never know. He's so deadpan about everything. I usually just laugh it off, but man, that guy's an enigma. We start walking over to Robert's house. Does Robert even know how to cook? I have sincere doubts about whether he even knows how to shave properly or iron his shirts. I feel like you learn to cook after you learn those two first. Hey. One time, I saw him grab a, grab a hot dog from a trash can. I mean... It was at the very top of the trash can, like, sitting above it. Still, if he were on trial, I think the jury would define that as in the trash. In his defense, I've definitely considered grabbing food from the top of the trash before. Well, yeah, I think we've all considered it, but the difference is that Robert actually did it. True. Maybe he's the enlightened one. Maybe we're holding ourselves back. We arrive at Robert's house and ring the doorbell, but the doorbell won't chime. Hmm. <laughs> Must be broken. Craig knocks on the door a few times. Since when does Robert have a dog? I don't know. It's weird. I can hear Robert just inside. One second! This is uncharted. This is uncharted territory, Vox. What if he's the one making barking noises and there is no dog? Don't say that. Not even inside yet. Finally, the door opens. Robert looks a little surprised to see me. Vox, didn't know you'd be tagging along. Did Craig not tell Robert I was coming? Come on, Craig. I can leave if there's not. No, it's fine. Come on in. We enter Robert's living room, which is surprisingly really nice. Super messy, but still nice. Make yourselves at home. We can still hear barking from the other room. I didn't know you have a dog, Robert. Oh yeah, that's Betsy. I have to put her up when guests are over. She'll calm down in a bit. What kind of dog is she? Pitbull. Rescued her from a dog fighting ring a few years back. She hates strangers. If I let her out right now, I'd probably have to take you both to the ER. Craig and I make eye contact. He raises an eyebrow at me. Oh, okay. Anyways, dinner should be ready in a minute. Hope you guys like Asobuco. Robert leaves the room, presumably to go to the kitchen. Craig leans in and whispers. Was the dog fighting thing real or was he kidding? I don't know. What's Asobuco? I don't know. Did he make up that word? Until I have also Buco in front of me, we can only assume so. We sit in silence for a second, taking, Robert's li taking in Robert's living room. Thanks, Kendra, for the super. Oh, ha, ha. Well, if you enjoy that kind of fan art, then you can keep it to yourself. I'm not interested. Are oh, you about to get sword? Nah. Nah, usually you wake up in those situations. We voluntarily walked into this one. Oh. Robert finally walks into the room carrying three paper plates of steaming food like a waiter. I don't have a dining table. Don't trust them. So we're eating here. Also, I don't have real people plates. Hope that's okay. Robert sets plates in front of us on the coffee table. I still can't tell what it is. Looks like meat. Maybe. Lots of sauce. I can make out some vegetables. I think that might be rice, but it could also be pasta. There's only one way to find out. I take a bite. Hey. Oh my god. I take another bite. The medley of flavors in this dish is amazing. The meat is so tender and the risotto, I think that's what it is, is so creamy. Robert, this is really incredible. You cooked this? I fished it out of a dumpster by in a restaurant. At least I think it was a restaurant. Hey. Can you believe people just throw this stuff away? I almost gag. Hey. I'm kidding. I look over at Craig, who looks wary, but still has his mouth full. 
He gives Robert a thumbs up. How'd you like it? Where'd you learn how to, where'd you learn how to cook like this? Man. Worked at a restaurant in Spain for a hot sec. Looks like it's the exact same. Hmm. Is he messing with us? I decide to play along. You lived in Spain? After I dropped out of college, I went backpacking through Europe. Crashing on couches, sleeping in hostels, wherever. Totally broke. Worked a couple of odd jobs wherever I could to scrape together some cash. One night, I'm eating dinner at this little restaurant that's just outside of Madrid. I go to pay and realize I spent the last of my money on booze the night before. I'm in the middle of ditching when the manager catches and puts me to work in the kitchen. Long story short, they ended up liking me so much they offered me a job. Why not, right? Started living with some distant relatives on my mom's side. Over the course of two years, I worked my way up from busboy to sous chef. I learned a lot. Craig and I went wait for the punchline. What night watchman did he swindle to get back it back to the States? Who did he con in a game of poker in the back room of a speakeasy for safe passage in the crew quarters of a cargo ship? Um. This water bottle is so huge, I literally have to grab it with two hands. Although, to be fair, it has like a strap on it, like at the top, so I can do that. But I feel like it's a little... I feel like it's... I, I can pick... Okay, I can pick it up with one hand. Just about. Just about I can pick it up with one hand. But it feels a little finicky. How big is it? It's almost as girthy as my fucking dick and balls, okay? Almost. Anyway, I still love to cook. I don't know what's real anymore, but this food's so good, I kinda don't care. It's amazing. It really is. To be honest, I wasn't exactly expecting gourmet cooking here. Especially not served on paper plates. I don't care about presentation. If the food is good, it should speak for itself. There's also Buko screaming for itself. And paper plates are just as good as regular plates if you double them up. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hey. Is it bad if I ask for seconds? Help yourself. Save room for dessert. I made lemonberry savarin. Mm -hmm. Well, aren't you just full of... Craig looks over at me. Surprises! Robert winks. You bet I am. You can come over for dinner anytime. Craig. Um, I'm gonna go get seconds. Me too. After consuming way more osabuco than my body could handle, and then really ensuring a later food coma with a generous serving of whatever Sabarin was, Craig and I decide to head out. Thanks for coming. I'm making an attempt to be more social. Well, we're always happy to stop by if you want company. Especially if there's osabuco involved. All right, so that scene is the exact same. Fair enough. Maybe doing that scene will change the ending some. Hmm? Oh, gang, thank you for the super. My lord. What's Craig messaging me about me now? Uh, I want to do Robert's final date, though. I want to do Robert. You know what they say about third dates? They get pretty serious. Might not have time to browse dad book for a while. Are you ready? Just a sec. Hmm, okay, so that, that may be the ending. Well, it probably will be. What's Craig saying? Hello, Amanda's dad. It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. Oh, this is the tea party. Okay, okay, I've already seen all that. That's all good. All right, I guess, yeah, we don't have much else to do. Let's finish Robert's route, and then we can reset and go for Joseph. Oh, save first. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. I always forget. I'm used to these games that are always online, or games that auto-save. I, I don't remember this. Let's go. Let's see what happens. Oh. I haven't spoken to Robert since that night we drove out to his thinking spot. He seemed unusually somber then. Like, more so. I haven't spoken to Robert since that time we drove out to his thinking spot. Yeah, I have. I went to his house for dinner. Game. Game. What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you playing at, game? What are you playing at? He seemed unusually somber then, like, more so than the usual amount of somber that Robert is, which is already a lot. I've been thinking about him and I hope he's doing okay, but I've been a little reluctant to reach out to him. Vox, hey Vox, guess he's getting their drink on tonight. I take a look at my dad book messages, there's a flurry of them from Robert. Guess, it's you. Also me, but mostly you. <laughs> yeah, dude. Type back to Robert. Robert, buddy, tonight we ride. Yes. Meet me at Jim and Kim's at 8 p.m. Not that I'm unappreciative, but I think it's the first time that Robert's given me given me more than an hour's warning before hanging out. Very interesting. Manda! 
Amanda pops her head into the hallway. Music I don't recognize blaring from her room. What's up? I'm hanging out with Robert later tonight. Okay, cool. Robert, who is my friend. I have friends. Happy for you, Dad. People enjoy my company, Amanda. Dad, I'm so happy for your continued development as a human being. What are you listening to? Sad shit. Amanda, like, you know what? You're an adult now. I gave it an earnest effort for all 18 years of your life. Go forth and swear. Fuck yeah! I really hope I don't regret this later. <laughs> Amanda goes back into her room and turns up the volume to hear her sad shit. I put on my going out coat, walk over to Jim and Kim's. I spot Robert leaning against the brick wall, smoking a cigarette. As I get closer, I realize that he looks a little different. Cleaner, I guess. Actually seems like he combed his hair, and his clothes are less wrinkled than usual. Hey. Hey. You take a shower just for me? I'm working on my relationship with exist with existence. <laughs> Mood. We both stand there for a second and don't say anything. Robert finishes his cigarette and abruptly goes inside. I follow him. By the time I go inside, Robert's already at the bar ordering two whiskeys. I spot a booth in the back and claim it for us. Robert slides in and hands me a glass. To toast. I'll save. See which one's the right. I feel like to toast is more in him. More in, more in his style. What the fuck? Never mind. Never mind. I thought he'd want to have a little bit of a jape. To us? Is to us. All the property damage and petty larceny that we may commit tonight. Maybe the other one's better. <laughs> to you? Interesting. I, f I would have figured he'd found that he'd find that like too, too like forward. It's your continued existence. Interesting. Okay. We clink whiskeys and I watch him sip his, rather than his traditional approach of slamming the whiskey back as quickly as possible. So, what's the plan for tonight? Hit some other bars. Maybe grab some pizza. I think that'll kill some time before we go burn down that old abandoned house in the woods. It's definitely not as fun if it's abandoned. Mary pops over the back of the booth, a glass of wine in her hand. She punches Robert in the shoulder. Where is my phone call? Sorry. Figured you were busy sinking your teeth into some poor sap. I am. He's right here. I look around the booth to see I look around the booth to see a guy sitting across from her. He waves meekly. You replacing me with the new kid? Mary, I could never replace you. Whether I wanted to or not. Mary leaves her booth and slides next to Robert. The guy she was sitting with looks mildly relieved. She eyes Robert's clean pressed clothes up and down suspiciously. What, do you got a court date coming up? Oh, damn. Right, here we go. He does have a court date. We're going to cover for him. He looks handsome. He looks handsome. I think he cleans up nicely. <laughs> Fuck, really? Damn, I was trying to be nice. We were nice before and we tried to be nice now and it doesn't work. You're going to have to shave first. Yeah, that's... Seriously, though, what's up with you? Robert stares down at his drink, suddenly looking serious. It's... Pappy. Doctors say it's cirrhosis of the liver. I told that old bag of bones to quit it with the sauce, but it's all he's ever known, especially since Ma's gone. Oh, dear. That's why I invited you out tonight. I just didn't want to be alone. Oh, come on. Fox, don't be an asshole. You know the one thing Robert doesn't joke about is his pappy. Whoops. They're giving him two months. I gotta help him straighten out his affairs. Oh, man, I'm, I'm so sorry. Robert takes a long look at his whiskey, eyeing it in the dim glow of the bar's lights. I look at his life, and I look at mine, and I know history's just doomed to repeat itself. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's retired with his new girlfriend in Acapulco. They watch the sunset every night, probably screw like donkeys. God fucking damn it. Wait, aren't rabbits the ones who screw a lot? Oh, sorry. Didn't realize you were an expert on which animals screw a lot. Come on. Please stop saying the word screw. Robert finishes his drink and slides it away from him. He gets up out of the booth. This motherfucker. Me and Vox are gonna hit the bricks. You coming with? Mary casts one last glance at the sad sap she's been hunting and downs the rest of her wine in one gulp. This place is dead anyways. So we're bringing Mary with us this time. Okay. We exit the bar and find a typically empty street filled with a small crowd of people. At the front is a guy with a really deliberate attitude and a bad posture. He carries a lantern that he shines up at his face for dramatic effect. What's going on? Looks like it's one of those walking ghost tours. They do that in this part of town all the time. 
I've always wanted to do one of those. You know all the stories are fake, right? Pretty much all of my stories are fake. This is research. Robert makes a beeline to the, towards the back of the group. He turns around when he notices I'm not following him. Come on. We can't just crash it, can we? Don't be such a square, Vox. Just act like you belong. Robert sidles up to the tour group. I reluctantly fall into step behind him. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? Hey, hey, it was in this place, in 1694, that the most infamous witch trials were held. To date, we do not know if the people burned at the stake were actually witches, but it is widely reported that, the, that their ghosts still haunt this hapless dive bar to this very day. It was actually 1692. Right. What? And the site was over by the coffee shop down the road. I'm sorry, who are you? Daniel McSturgis, ghost historian. This is my colleague, Dr... 80s reference, 90s references. <laughs> this man would be into 80s references. There you go. Dr. Loomis, paranormal investigator extraordinaire. We're touring America's most haunted locations as research for our new book. You may have seen our guest cameo in Paranormal House Hunters Extreme Edition. A couple of people in the group start nodding. Man, Robert's good at this. I... Are you guys part of the group? I don't remember seeing you at the first stop. We like to keep a low profile. Easier to catch ghosts that way. Oh. They've definitely been here. Been standing next to them the whole time. Thank you. Thank you, random lady who I do not know. Hey. As I was saying, the epicenter of paranormal activity can be found at the Coffee Spoon. Over there. The man who runs it has been plagued by haunting since he signed the lease. They have near driven him mad. But whatever you want to say is cool, I guess. It's your tour. Man, didn't know that about Matt. Wait, Robert's making this up. <laughs> the rest of the tour group listens intently to Robert's every word. I think the tour guide can tell that he's losing the group. He seems to be getting flustered. Right. Thank you for your contribution and knowledge, Mr. McSturgis. Let's move on to the next haunted location. Robert, Mary, and I follow the group down the street. A tour guide's shirt is cool. Yeah, everyone in the group gets one if we make it to the final location. Turn to Robert and grab him by the shoulders. I need that t-shirt. Well, guess we're in for the long haul then. Just follow my lead. Don't arouse too much suspicion and we'll have a cool ghost shirt in no time. Oh. Thanks, Kendra, for the super. Our group arrives at an old, decrepit, colonial-style house. A quick pause in the tour. My name is Quinn, but most people on the ghost tour circuit call me Tour Master Quinn. I'm a DJ, trivia master, and part-time actor. I do private ghost hunting events, birthday parties, MC bar mitzvahs, and perform traditional vaudevillian mime work. Tour Master Quinn gives out headshots to all of us. His resume is on the back. Hmm, stage combat experience. Anyway, here's a little bit of history for you all. This was the home of noted American author Dorothy Pembridge, whose prose was widely popular in the late 19th century. It was in the attic of this very home where she wrote such classics as The Diaries of a Victorian Mistress, Lady Fitzwilliam's Courtship, and The Ghost of Sea Captain Regin Reginald Barclay. She unfortunately died of consumption shortly after the turn of the century, but several people have reported that on some nights you can see a light from the attic where the ghost of Miss Pembridge continues to work on her latest bestseller. I guess you could say that she was consumed by her work. My feelings hurt. <laughs> My feelings hurt. No reaction from the crowd. This guy needs to work on his dad jokes. Actually, consumption is the popular cover-up. Little known fact is that it was actually a murder-suicide. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure she died of consumption. Sure, sure. We definitely didn't hire Stanley Kubrick to elaborately fake the moon landing. <laughs> That's the watered-down, censored version they teach you in school. But if you can't handle the real story, I understand. It's not for the faint of heart. Can we... I think everyone would much rather hear what this world-renowned ghost historian has to say, right, everybody? The group murmurs in agreement. This is a topic we cover extensively in our book, Dr. Loomis. Would you care to tell this story? Riff something highbrow, go with something I know, rely on amazing improv comedy skills. Now, as a person who's incredible at all of these, hmm, 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 go with something I know, riff something highbrow, save. 
Ah, yes. Though it's rarely covered in traditional textbooks, Dorothy Pembridge was caught in a fierce rivalry with fellow local author Arthur Livingston Price. Arthur's books were blatant rip-offs of Pembridge's work and consistently sold better. Pembridge was enraged by this and confronted Livingston Price at his home with plans to end his life. Their bitter feud surprisingly blossomed into a torrid, passionate affair. After many months of secret courtship, Pembridge followed through with her original plan and poisoned Livingston Price in his sleep. Overcome with unexpected grief, Pembridge polished off the last of the poison and died by her lover's side. Reports say that couples who enter this house will no doubt doom their relationship to a bitter end. He, yeah, let's fucking go. Man, I should bring my wife here. The entire tour group laughs heartily. I'm kidding. My wife's dead. <laughs> the crowd gasps. <gasps> she was killed by a ghost. The crowd gasps again. I'm just messing with you guys. A nervous chuckle rips through the crowd. The tour guide sees this as an opportunity to take back the group. To, to take back the group and addresses us with some razzle-dazzle. Ha! What an interesting story. Now... I just want everyone to know that the next location is extremely terrifying. If anyone thinks they can't handle it, feel free to excuse yourselves. Interesting. All right, I'm bored. Harry turns to a young guy looking at his phone and taps him on the shoulder. Hey, kid, fancy buying a gal a drink? The guy looks up at her and smiles. Only if the bar is haunted. Honey, I can show you the most haunted place in town. I think you should exercise your demons if that's what you're looking for. Don't write, che don't write checks your dick can't cash, kid. His eyes go wide. Mary salutes me and Robert. She suddenly pulls me into a hug and murmurs into my ear. When you've known Rob for as long as I have, you know when something's wrong. Keep an eye out for me tonight, okay? Sure, Harry. Good man. Harry pats me on the back and pulls away. She takes the, guide hand, the guy's hand and leads him down the street. Hey. Take it sleazy, fellas. God help that poor soul. <laughs> Mary or the kid? Both. Our last stop, this burial ground is such a hotbed of horrifying paranormal activity that I'm not even sure where to begin. There's the wailing ghost of the wharf man, the vampire of Maple Bay, the children of the moonlight. What about the Dover ghost? By this point, the tour guide is clearly irritated with us. What about it? Oh, nothing. I just thought it would be a crime to come all the way out to the cemetery. The actual origin. One of New England's most notorious paranormal entities. And not even mention the infamous Dover ghost. That's not a real thing. That is absolutely not a real thing. I think someone needs to brush up on their paranormal history. I know tons about paranormal history. I know every ghost story in this area. I can guarantee there's one you don't know. Robert looks over at me and smiles. Hey. Would you folks c care to hear the tale of how Loomis and I met? No. The entire group shushes the tour guide. Okay, fine, fine, tell the story. Well, it was a dark and stormy night. I wasn't always a paranormal investigator. Way back when, I was just a bribe Bible salesman, traveling grifter. Grifter. Yeah. Moving from town to town, always looking for my next mark. Wasn't an easy life, but I had fun. Taken from the rich, given to the poor actually also taken from the poor. I had a shaky moral foundation. I happened upon the quiet town of Maple Bay quite by accident, but little did I know that this city has a dark side. Mm. Now, about the same time, I was just starting out as an apprentice to a rather famous ghost hunter who was an old family friend of mine. I carried the equipment, operated the EVP machine, all of that. Wait. Yes? Who was the famous ghost hunter? Well, I don't like the name drop, but Georgia Mathers. The tour group gasps. Georgia Mathers? She's a legend. You know her? Noah. Amazing woman. Died mysteriously. Miss you, Georgie. Oh. Anyway, we were in Maple Bay investigating some reports of strange lights and sounds coming from the cemetery late at night. Now, we've been warned by the old crypt keeper that this place was highly dangerous, but Georgia was never one to shy away from an adventure. We camped out in the center of the cemetery for three nights straight. We endured your so-called Wailing Watchman. Wailing Ghost of the Wharf Man. Whatever. Your stupid vampire was just a teenager in a mask. But the Dover Ghost. Man. Tell him, Loomis. Hey. So, there I was. Just walking back to my hotel after a long day of... Damn. Class.
classic pigeon drop scam. Putting out feelers for a real deal. Putting out feelers for a rip deal. I was going to steal a baby, probably. Would have made me rich. I found myself walking past this cemetery. And now, I was never a very superstitious man, but something seemed off. I could hear some sort of common... Uh, uh, bleh. I could hear some sort of commotion happening deep within the graveyard, then I felt compelled to investigate. And thank God you did. Georgie and I were conducting a seance in the mausoleum. At first, things were pretty normal. But after about an hour, everything went south. Playing back the EVP meter, we were able to hear a single word. Run. The air suddenly went cold. Something was very, very wrong. I just knew we weren't alone. We started to hear the faint, distant scraping noise, like something being dragged across the ground. It got louder and louder until it was deafening, some kind of demented howl. And then I felt it, someone, something, grabbing my ankle. Robert has the whole, cra whole crowd hook, line, and sinker. You could hear a pin drop. I've only cried twice in my life. Once was at the birth of my daughter. The other was when that thing started dragging me. I wasn't sure where it was taking me, but I knew it was no place I wanted to go. I was sure I was going to die. The moment I crossed the gate into the cemetery, I heard this god-awful screeching. I ran into the mausoleum, just in time to see a man being pulled across the floor by. God, to this day... The mere thought of it ties my stomach into knots. It looked like a man, but like... I glance at Robert. Like someone who didn't know what a man was supposed to look like tried to put one together. The arms were too long. Its eyes glowed red. It was like a walking shadow. What did I do? What any good person would do. I lunged for... Shoot, what was his fake name? D uh, Daniel McSturgis. Daniel. Yeah, I grabbed his hand and entered into a tug of war with the unholiest of forces. I thought I was going to be torn in half, but I had God on my side. The pocket Bible I always kept on me fell out of my shirt pocket, and to this day, I can remember what passage it opened up to. Oh, fuck, I don't know the Bible. Um, Leviticus, Revelations, um... Austin. I don't know if that's an actual book in the Bible. I'm going to say Leviticus. And if thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour, unleavened, mingled with oil. Not exactly relevant, but true. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. No, 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 no. Ow, oh, I want to go back and try the, try the other ones. No. Okay, wait, we can, we can skip. We can, we can skip through. We can skip through. I'll remember to save next time. All right, traveling grifter. Finally worked my way up from ticket taker to dunk tank technician. Sat on that stand for hours on end and nobody could, even, could ever hit the target. Trade secret? It was rigged. We didn't use actual water. Anyway, after a long day of yelling myself hoarse, found myself walking past this very cemetery. Okay, cool. Bing, 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 bing. Daniel McSturgis? Bada bing. All right, save. Revelations. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. I have no idea where Robert pulled that verse from. That was a good one. That was a good one. Sunny, thank you. Miso, thank you very much. With a horrifying growl, the entity, the entity finally relented. Daniel, Daniel and I collapsed onto the ground, exhausted, we were both covered in blood. That damn creature clawed into my chest. Got me real good. I had to get 16 stitches. Robert pulls down the collar of his shirt to reveal a long, wicked scar across his pecs. And that's how I got this scar. I followed Georgia Mathers to the ends of the earth. We faced exorcisms, demons, poltergeists that threw our equipment across the room. But I had never seen Georgia so scared. She was never the same after that. And neither was I. Watching what happened to Daniel and Georgia shook my faith. 
but I came out of that experience a better man and a better friend. We've been brothers ever since. The tour group gives us a round of applause for Daniel, uh, Robert and I, and we share an emotional hug as he embraces me. I can smell the cologne on his neck. Ha! Huh, Robert does clean up good. I find myself lingering a little too long on the hug. The tour guide seems to have bought it. Even he's wiping a tear from his eyes. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be able to share our story. Be sure to watch out for our book. Paranormal Excursions of the Supernatural, Ice Road Ghost Truckers. I Saw a Demon, The Shocking True Story of Seeing a Demon, The Bro's Guide to the Hardest Ghosts. Okay. <laughs> Wait, yes, this is Bressel Laugh. Hang on. Let's try, let's try the other ones. Try the other ones. Hang on. The, I feel like the bro's guide to the hottest ghost is going to like... He's not going to like that. Oh no, he did like that. Hang on. What about the other one? What about the other one? <laughs> yes, go! Robert has to, has to suppress a laugh yeah. at that one. Well, I think you both definitely earned your t-shirts. The tour guide hands us the coveted t-shirts. He then slips both his business card and leans in close. If you guys are ever needed for a professional actor, balloon animal artist, Elvis impersonator, or a new model, please don't hesitate to contact me. You got it, buddy. After a couple tourists take selfies with us, we split away from the group and walk home. That was incredible. <laughs> I really can't believe they bought all of that. They didn't know you had it in your box. Excuse me, Dr. Loomis. The bit about the pocket Bible was aces, although given the Dover ghost glowing red eyes was a little cliche. And the Kubrick conspiracy theory bit wasn't all part of the character. Well, you got t-shirts out of it. We arrive in front of Robert's house. Wanna have a drink? <laughs> Don't wanna fuck it up. Hmm. If we say nah, I'm good, is that the right answer? We've gotten to the end now. Yeah, I've saved. Alright, we'll see. We'll see. I know where this goes, small. I know the steps. One second I'm sipping delicious aged scotch, the next I'm foaming at the mouth. And you've taken over the throne. Long live the king, baby. Hey, correct! Robert leads me inside. I can't help but think about what Mary said to me. Robert did seem a little bit off, but that completely disappeared when we were joking around with the ghost tour. I don't know. He's hard to read. While I'm thinking, I hear claws skittering across the floor. Oh god, it's his pitbull! I'm about to be torn to shreds! I shut my eyes and brace for impact. Betsy, hey, be nice! I don't feel anything but paws scratching at my shoes. I open my eyes. Oh, zoom. Oh, that was like a brief, a brief image of some ghost in my eyes. Betsy? Oh, little Betsy! Oh, hello! Hi! Robert's dog jumps away from me, running around in circles and sniffing Robert's legs. He pats her on the head. Hey, that's not a pit bull. This is the cutest, dumbest Boston Terrier I've ever seen. Betsy, you're not a pit bull? And you weren't taken in by the Dover ghost? Betsy's made of tougher stuff than that, ain't you, girl? Betsy rolls over for some well-deserved belly rubs. I just keep a picture of a large pit bull in my wallet in case of emergencies. Comedic emergencies. We make our way to Robert's living room. For a quiet man with arguably the oldest pickup truck that can be legally driven, his place is amazing. There are sleek, modern appliances throughout the room with a big flat screen TV mounted on the wall. I'm obsessed with that meme of like, you know, making fun of the whole perception that all pit bulls are violent. And it's like, um, someone, someone says, yeah, now, nah, yeah, now nah, don't touch my dog. They bite. And, <laughs> and it's like pit bull named destroyer. And it's the tiniest pit bull with the widest smile being like, hello, and kind of holding paw and being like, da, da, da. It's got like this cute little song playing. His name is destroyer. He has shelves upon shelves of DVDs. Guess he wasn't lying about being really into cinema. He pours us both a glass of whiskey from a well-stocked bar in the corner while Betsy curls up on a pile of cushions. So, how did you really get that scar? Now don't tell me you got it fishing for Alaskan king crabs in the Bering Sea or something. You've trained me too well. <laughs> Robert laughs and takes a sip of his drink. My daughter and I were riding our bikes. I hit a rock, flew over the handlebars, and then we... Went to the hospital. That's it. I... Not a very interesting story. Never heard you talk about your daughter. Well, I have one. Mm -hmm. That's her. He points at a picture on the wall of a very serious little girl with dark eyes. Yep, that's definitely Robert's daughter. How old is she? 
Uh, 25, 26, not too sure. Does she live around here? Really? No. Val lives back, back home in Brooklyn. Works at some new media online magazine thing. Makes buckets, though. I love how I gave this guy the kind of Italian-American accent, and he just so happens to be from Brooklyn. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking, my foresight is insane. Avery Mentors, thank you very much for the super. And Eugene. Yes, Avery, no, no, definitely. I, I think a lot more people have experienced that than we've, um, than you, than you would have thought. It's gonna be okay, all right? He suddenly seems really serious. Probably shouldn't press him about it. You like Santana? Great. Robert puts on Santana, takes a seat on the couch next to me. He suddenly downs his drink in one gulp. Hey. You all right? Robert leans in and kisses me, the taste of whiskey burning my lips. I'm surprised at first, but slowly relax into his arms. He pulls away slightly, his lips barely brushing against my mouth. And now, let's fucking go. I can't say anything at best managing a sigh. Robert leans in again, kissing me harder. He pulls my bottom lip between his teeth and bites slightly, sliding a hand under my shirt. My heart pounds in my chest as he lies us both down on the couch. He kisses a trail of down my neck, his teeth grazing my skin. I, I just, wait. It's not that. Robert bites down and I have to stifle a moan. <laughs> Stop. Robert stiffens up and pulls away. No biting? No, no, I'm more than okay with that. Something's up. Robert runs a hand through his hair and looks away. I'm fine. I've just been kind of stressed out. Tired. Not a big deal. Listen, I want this as badly as you do. But I know something's wrong. I need to make sure that you're okay. Robert stares at the ground. You don't know me that well, Vox. I'm not... a good person. He takes a deep breath. I spent my whole life only taking and taking and taking. And now here I am. An old, broken man, sitting on top of a pile of everything I've ever taken. Alone. But I want to know you. You don't have to keep hiding behind fake stories and acting like you don't have feelings. It's... He sighs heavily. It's Val. She's visiting tomorrow. She wants to patch things up. Are you... Uh... I'm sorry, but is this a bit... No. When was the last time you saw her? Three, four, I think. Months? Years. I sit up straight. Jesus, Robert, what happened between you two? I don't want to talk about it. Robert and I sit in silence, neither of us wanting to look at each other, both of us unsure of what to do next. I don't know. Fine. Hmm. Things were already bad between us. I cared about her, always did. Things just got in the way. Before I knew it, she was leaving for college. It had nothing to do with me. Marilyn and I moved out here to settle down. Thought it would help to get away from all the distractions, all the money, drinking. But temptation gets to you. I tried to be better, I just couldn't. And then, the accident, it changed everything. Oh my god. I think every day about how she must have died hating me. I never became the better man that she wanted me to be. The one she always saw in me. She was the last thread Val and I had connecting us together. I didn't know that when I lost my wife, I was going to lose my daughter too. Oh, that. I spent so much time chasing after things I thought were going to make me happy. And I ruined my only real chance at happiness. Now my wife is dead. My daughter hates me. And I convinced myself that this... He gestured vaguely in my direction. Was gonna make me happy. Why do I even try anymore? I'm so sorry. I know how hard it is. No, you don't. How could you possibly know how this feels? You did everything right. Your daughter loves you. You're a good person. I was a terrible husband and I'm an even worse father. I have no idea why she's even bothering to contact me now. I know I'm just going to fuck it up like I always do. I'm broken. I shouldn't even go. Robert puts his head in his hands. 
tell him what he needs to hear. Nothing is going to change until you do. Robert pauses and he looks at me. There are a lot of things in my life that I regret, that I wish I could take back or do over, and it hurts so much to know that I can't. But what I can do, and what you have the privilege of doing tomorrow morning, is to wake up and try to be a better person than you were the day before. Things aren't going to fix themselves tomorrow or the next day, and patching things up with Val isn't going to solve all your problems either. But nothing is going to change if you don't. You can't love anyone else until you stop hating yourself. And you're right. I don't know you that well, but you have the same capacity for good that we all have. And I know you can find it. Val is giving you a chance. Don't waste it. But, Robert, listen to me. It's going to be okay. But, I lean over and embrace Robert, pulling him in as tightly as I can. He buries his head into my shoulder, hugging me back. It's going to be okay. I place a hand on the back of his head and stroke his hair. He shudders and then sobs, and I realize that he's crying. <laughs> Thank you. We stay there for a while, holding each other. We both eventually drift off to sleep. Fucking hell. Damn. Damn. That was rough. That was really rough. God, you you just you can just imagine like how it must have felt for Robert like being saddled with so much guilt when, you know. Yeah, like he's not perfect or anything, but the accident isn't his fault, but he definitely definitely blames himself because of everything that happened before and after it, you know. He's kind of become conditioned to see himself as the cause of his family's problems and just getting a little bit of comfort, which is probably the first time in many, many years that he's had that kind of genuine comfort from someone that he trusts. Unbelievable. God, I wish that were me. <laughs> I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's our car in the driveway. Okay, got to act natural. Be cool, Vox, be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Something fishy. Rats. Uh, life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and funding of the US government. Aww. Well, if they think they're gonna take me alive, they got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. <sighs> yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over the kitchen table where a present lies, covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to pay to take a piece of a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long-haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. This is all 19 seasons! And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts. Featured on the show. Yeah. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. Glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pig skin or something? Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. <gasps> <gasps> Surprise dad party. What? You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here. Well, yeah. Everyone wanted me to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is. Fully customizable, down to the type of mac. And there's an ice cream cake, the good kind, with the crunchies in the middle. I... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, alright? So proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. 
first, mac and cheese. Um, we'll go over to Mary, who's having a lively conversation with Amanda. Listen, kid, you're going to need some real-life skills out there if you're going to make it out on the streets. I'm going to college. Same thing. Look, I know you're not old enough to drink, right? And I know you're smart enough not to drink until you're of legal age. Uh-huh. But hypothetically, if you were to drink, it would behoove you to drink a glass of water between rounds. Got it. Hypothetically. And if you wake up with a headache, all you gotta do is take a jar of pickles and drink the pickle juice. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> What's going on here? Girl talk. Mary turns back to Amanda. Now let me tell you about how to deal with a bad roommate. First thing to know, you get straight A's if they die during the semester. Mary! Relax, it's a myth. Supposedly. <laughs> Against my better judgment, I leave them be. Hello? Who's this? I feel like I, f I feel I feel like instead of a character moving on the screen, I felt like at the exact same speed a bus just entered my booth and hit me straight in the head and I'm just like well, I'm dead. Uh, I don't think I recognize that girl by the snack table. I should go and say hello. Hi, I don't think we've met. Oh, we've met years ago, and I'm here for my revenge. You're Robert's kid, aren't you? Spot on. Guess that makes you Fox, huh? Yeah, nice to meet you. I'm glad Robert's brought you along. He promised there'd be free food, so that's kind of hard to pass up, and... Look, I don't know you. Can I get real with you for a sec? My old man's a real close book, you know? Me and him, we got a long way. We got a long way to go. You don't erase decades of neglect in a week. You sure can get tired of staying angry about it. That kind of bitterness, it poisons you, I think. I'm too young for that. Anyway, lately he's been better. A lot better. And between him shaving for once and how much he talks about you, I get the feeling you have something to do with it. So, thanks. Robert means a lot to me. I'm glad he's getting better. Just keep an eye on him while I'm not around, okay? Or else. What? I'm kidding. Or am I? I don't know why I'm like this. I think it runs in the family. Amanda trots up to the conversation. Hey, I love your necklace. And your hair. And I just... Jeez, your whole vibe is so cool. Thanks. I like your jacket. My girlfriend collects pins too. Oh, this is my daughter Amanda. Amanda, this is Robert's daughter Val. Nice meeting you. Heard you're a photographer. Oh. Aspiring photographer? I'm going to school for it. You take pictures. Yes? Then you're a photographer. Welcome to the biz. Val hands Amanda a business card. If you're ever looking for internships, shoot me an email. Anyway, I need to go make friends with that woman over there who's dual wielding wine glasses. Catch you later. I can't date Robert and his daughter at the same time! Fuck! Why would this game make me want to choose? She's gay, she has a girlfriend, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Why would they why would they curveball me like that right at the end? Why would they curveball me like that? I hate it! I spent all this time, I spent all this time getting attached to Robert and feeling like I'd made the right choice, and then suddenly she just walks into and out of my life. Why do they have to make us so fine? Why? Tell me why, Game Grumps. Why did you do that? Hmm? Anyway. She's so cool. She gave me her business card. She touched my hand. Congrats. You just networked for the first time. I'm a regular business lady now. Quarterly projections, stock market, synergy. While well, you're making a fortune as a businesswoman, I gotta keep this party going. Catch you around, Pops. Oh, it's Brian. Vox. Brian, you made it. Ha. Uh. <laughs> I don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? Oh. It's not bad. Just not bad? Hey. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you, don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome. Tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Bro. This is a real rager taking our older age into consideration. I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Hey. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Me too, dude. Briar and Hazel peek out from behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Thank you for all that ice cream cake. 
Wait, girls, how much of that did you eat? Briar at four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel at four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, boy. I'll let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon, yeah? Totally. Tell Amanda congrats for us. Looks like you've settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep. Couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph. That'd be great. Look at the fucking pain in his eyes. Look at how badly he thinks about cock every single day. And then feels the weight of God upon his shoulders. Look at his eyes. Well, see you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac oh. and cheese. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Fox. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it, turned it around for finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Amanda! Come say hi to your old teacher! Hey. Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Pew pew! Ha! Yeah, thanks! Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. And you no longer hold power over me. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm going to break anything I want and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Nope. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so... She'll fit into college just fine. Hey, man. Matt, let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of right said banana bread ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Ah. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting, and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy. But it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this. I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to God, Vox, if you cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Hmm. Kind of shocking of all of our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? Figured we needed at least one together before I leave. Amanda. Thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is, the, this is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us to down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? <laughs> huh. I'm going to break so much stuff, intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably going to have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. Glance over to the back of the yard where Robert is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. I was wondering when he was going to show up. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are going to go get ice cream. Love you, Pops. She's made friends with the Emmas again. Interesting. Amanda runs off to join her friends. Oh my god, we have... We're just in our backyard, we have this beautiful cherry blossom? Damn, okay. How do we afford that? Take a seat next to Robert as the last guests make their way out of the party. Hey. Hey. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. So, I had a chance to talk to Val. She physically threatened you? Yeah. That's my girl. She said you've been doing better. I'm trying to work on the vices. I also showered today. We sit in silence for a moment. You know, every day for me is a battle against my own self-destructive habits. Lately, it's gotten a little easier. 
Thanks for talking some sense into me. It's hard to get things through my thick skull sometimes, but what you said that night has actually helped. I'm glad. I like you, Vox. I like you a lot. I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. I lean in and kiss him for a moment before he looks away. He takes my hand in his. You're special to me. But I have some stuff I need to work on. Emotionally, before I can get into anything romantic with you. You deserve better than who I am right now. I need to be on my own for a bit. Figure things, some things out. Of course. I think what you re need right now is a friend. And I'm very happy to be that for you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. If you're ever ready for more than that, you know where to find me. Let's on go sometime. I would love that. I put my head on his shoulder and we watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon together. Yay! That, I think, I was thinking about it. The idea of him getting into, like, something properly romantic after having been on three dates with us would not have suited his character. The idea of us being very, very close and definitely romantically involved but mostly just friends at the moment is like the really perfect way to end off the the story that is told in this game, right? I really like the way that played out. And such an interesting character that all of, it's really fun because all of these characters are born from very strict archetypes, right? Like you've got you've got you've got the Brian with the dad bod, you've got Robert who's the mysterious edgy one, you've got Craig who's the who's the the dumb like sports guy, the jock, right? You've got all of these sort of stereotypes and all of these sort of um you know, that kind of stuff, but they have so much more depth to them the more you get to know about them in a way that, you know, it's not just that, oh, this is what would happen if the mysterious character had more depth to him. This is, no, this is, he is his own character. And it's really interesting to get to, to get to learn more about him and get to spend time with him. And I'm really interested to see what else this game has to offer, you know? Akuma! That's me! I said that last time. Daddy, who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Gee, daddy. And all of our dads. A game from the Game Grumps. Thank you, Game Grumps. You're the best, Pops. <laughs> and there we are, just kind of photoshopped in. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. We got the... We got a CG! Yay! I was wondering! We got to... He's drinking Jack Daniels. He's just... It's just... It's just Jack Daniels. Fuck, man. <laughs> Everything. Oh, I listen. As a guy who likes to knock back drinks to numb the pain, it makes sense. But you know, we can have better than that, Robert. Come on, I can afford a fucking giant cherry blossom tree in my backyard. I can get you some better scotch than that. Okay. Well, it's not scotch; it's bourbon. But you know what I'm talking about. I'll get you some good scotch instead, right? We got it. We got Robert. Oh. I really enjoyed the arc that he had. I feel like I can't even, like, I can't even view it as a sort of, um, like, I don't know, like, oh, I'm so glad, we, I, we, like, we kissed him and everything. I just, I'm just really, I'm just really interested in learning about his character, you know. He was so sweet and interesting, and getting beneath the surface was fascinating. Especially given that he's one of the, I'm not sure how it works with the other characters, but the whole trap of having sex with him on the first night is an interesting way of doing this. So I'm curious to learn what other uniquenesses there are to the other characters. Thanks, your mo you just killed the fattest roach ever. Nice job. Jean, thank you. Phoenix, thank you very, very much. Rebecca and Nana. We did it. All right. Let's go again. Mm, uh, continue, and we will continue from... Um, the, all right, Robert Date 1, New House. New House, I reckon, is, uh, Robert Date 1, Date 1, Date 2. Okay, load game from New House, I reckon, will be fine. So we're going to do, because I want to learn more about him, we're going to learn about Joseph and Mary. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. Your father and I, bing, 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 bing. Again, amazing that it just thinks to give you that choice, even though it doesn't really have a con consequence in gameplay. It lets you kind of I express yourself in a nice way. 
Uh, flaming tennis ball. Bada bada bing, bada bada bing, bada bada ba 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 ba. This was the day we adopted you. Bada bada ba 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 Multiple places to sleep. And Youngju, thank you very much. We got Robert. We fixed him. We didn't fix him. Okay, you know, we didn't fix him, but we set him on a path to being a better, more fulfilled, happy guy. You can start after the second date because there'll be more story tidbits about the character since you know them more. Interesting. Okay, where's Robert date two then? Robert date two, Amanda crying. All right, dad book. Boom. We can just go right into it. Thank you for the knowledge, Puff. That's very helpful. You've got dads. All right. Just. Mabel Bay's number one youth minister for five years running and soon to be my lovely husband. His family's a little weird, but Joseph seems cool. I should take him up on his offer to hang out. Really well, thank you for the gifted. Akko, thank you very much for the super. You guys have been so kind. Wait. How do I hang out with a priest? I don't go to church. Should I be Jesusing? In my experience, hanging out with a priest, uh, you know, they, 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 it varies a lot. The priest that I know is, you know, at the very least tolerant of people who aren't, so. I imagine Joseph's family staring at me as I fumble through some sort of prayer attempt. Maybe not too Jesus-y. A light smattering of Jesus. Will he want me to pray? Is he going to pray for me? Do I have to pray at him? Talking to Joseph, huh? Gah! Amanda, how many times have I told you not to sneak up on me like that? I selectively ignore it every time you do, Pops. Amanda looks over at my shoulder at the screen. Joseph can't read your mind, you know. If you want to talk, just message him. I've never been friends with a priest before. What do I talk about? My favorite Bible passages? Ice cream socials? Khakis? First of all, he's a youth minister with a tattoo, not a priest. There's a difference? You're overthinking it, Dad. Listen, just put it like this. Hello, neighbor. Thanks again for the invite to the barbecue. I'd love to hang out soon if you're not too busy. This not a little too business casual. Fine, fine. Give me the keyboard. I got this. Amanda focuses on the keys. Hi, Joseph. It was great meeting you and your family. I'm still new around here, so if you'd like, I'd love to hang out and get to know you. See ya. The smiley is a nice touch. Almost immediately, I receive a response. He's that kind of guy. Now that makes sense. Thanks, Phoenix. And Tokito, thank you for the 50 gifted. That's nuts. Thank you so much. Gooey flames, thank you very much. The fact that a demon wants to corrupt a man of God is very poetic. Uh... Hi, Vox. If you're not doing anything in a bit, the kids and I are baking treats for the church baked sale today, and we'd love to have you over. It'll be a blast, so let me know. It wasn't so bad. He uses a lot of exclamation points. Hmm. I'm more concerned about him signing his name with a tilde. I'm willing to let it slide this time. I love talking to boomers who sign their name at the end of texts. It's really funny. Uh. I respond back. Sounds like fun, Fox. Well, guess I'm doing this. Guess I'm doing this. Great. Come by the house as soon as you're ready. We'll be here. Mm. Save a brownie for me. Promise you won't sneak up on me anymore? Uh. Amanda stares at me, unblinking. How to make promises I can't keep. Real to a fault, Pops. Uh. And Dad, please don't be weird about the religion thing. Me? Weird? Never. I'm only a demon. Only a demon. I don't want to be cast back down to hell. It sucks. I make the short walk over to Joseph's place. Don't be weird, Fox. But what if they hang up a bunch of crosses? Or collect those little porcelain babies? What if they're all praying? Do they pray before dinner? During dinner? Over the porcelain babies? The door begins to creak open. A shadowy figure obscured on the other side. Who's there? Um, Vox? The door opens the rest of the way. It's Joseph's eldest. What's his name? Hey. Hey. Uh, uh, Chris is the baby. Christian? Oh, fuck. Thanks, Kendra. It's Chris. Chris, right. Hi again. It's, uh, I'm Vox. I know what your name is. Oh, yeah? We met at the barbecue. How's the, uh... Please don't say it. Jesus. Chris blinks slowly. Maybe he didn't hear that. You're weird. Is your dad... Before I finish, Chris walks into an adjacent room, leaving me in front of the open doorway. Home? 
That was a great first impression. For a moment, I wonder if I should just go in, further subjecting Joseph's family to my winning attitude and artful charisma. Mercifully, Joseph, he peeks his head around the corner. Vox, you made it. Joseph approaches me with his arms wide. So glad you could come by. I'm not. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. That's the kind of self semi confidence I like to see in a baking assistant. Come on in. Joseph leads me into a bright, spacious home full of nautical knickknacks. This isn't what I imagined at all. <gasps> Wait a minute. This man is a sailor with a tattoo and all sorts of nautical memorabilia. He was in the Navy. And in the Navy, he experimented with men and realized he was fucking gay. And he came back and couldn't look at his wife the same way. Oh my god, it's all coming together! I believe you've met Chris, who left you outside. Chris. Hmm? Are you going to apologize? Oh, right. Sorry. I try to make eye contact with Chris, but he keeps looking away. He must be really shy. It's alright. Next time, just be a little more inviting to our guests, okay? Sure. Chris seems r to relish the chance to escape the conversation and quickly vanishes into his room. Joseph turns to me apologetically. Don't take it personally. Chris likes to keep to himself. I mean, we didn't start off in the best foot in the world. Plus, being the eldest in the family can't be easy. We try to cut him a little slack where we can. Ah, and here are the twins. Christian, Christy, say hello to Vox. Hello, father. Hello, Vox. Kids, come on, dial it back on the creepy twin shtick. Creepy twin shtick? Egg them on. Can you two say, Come play with us, Danny. Oh, no. The twins stare up in unblinking unison. Come play with us, Danny. Joseph covers his mouth and looks away, but he's clearly holding back a big laugh. Oh, this is oh, that's actually cute. This is it. This is my dad world series. Okay, now say, Please help us, Mothra. <laughs> Please help us, Mothra. No, I can't take it. <laughs> Joseph is trying, trying his best not to break in front of his kids. The twins seem to be catching on and look eager to bust their dad. But can we keep it up? Go with something creepy. Obscure. Hmm, safe. Now say, they all float down. <laughs> they all float down here. Yes, they do. They all float down here, Father. Joseph can't take it anymore. Despite his quiet pr pr protestations, he's laughing pretty hard into his hand, and the kids giggle with him. How, how am I finding these creepy, shining kids cute? What the fuck? The twins, obviously pleased with a new arsenal of spooky weapons, leave the room to terrorize the rest of the community. My work here is done. I'm going to be hearing those lines for weeks. Next time we hang out, I'll try to teach him some lines from the thing. All right. So it looks like we've got a bit of a troublemaker on our hands. You think you can get it? You can you can out trouble a career pro? I don't know about that. I'm suddenly interrupted by a loud crash from the kitchen. What now? That doesn't sound good. Christy. No one responds. Joseph furrows his brow and motions for me to stay where I am. Wait here a minute. Joseph rushes into the kitchen. I remember this with Amanda. Half of fatherhood is trying to keep your kids from finding creative ways to kill themselves, and he's got four. Talk about worry. I take a seat on his surprisingly pristine couch and twiddle my thumbs. Examine the bookshelf. It's a pretty sturdy wooden bookshelf. It looks handmade. Did Joseph build this? There's a big stack of what looked like travel magazines, hyenas of the Serengeti, the underwater mysteries of the Antarctic, and on and on. Seems like Joseph really loves a good adventure. Unless this is a merry thing. <laughs> Who knows? Next to them are a couple of different Bibles. Looks like he's covering all the Bible bases. King James, New American Standard, the Bible for teens. He is a cool youth minister after all. On a higher shelf, there are a bunch of old romance novels. Judging by the wine stains, these must be Mary's. The newest one looks like Hot Body Johnson Sex Detective. The eighth installment in... Wait, is this a series? <laughs> Now, that's the kind of literature I'd like to see. Oh, I think I missed this. How do me? Thank you for the gifted. Examine the coffee table. There's a couple cool knickknacks on the coffee table in front of me. Hey, a cross. Hey, another cross. This one looks a little different. And a third cross. Ununified design aesthetic. Smart choices. There's also a brass thing here. Looks like something a sailor would use to navigate with. Sextant, yeah. I think they're called sextants. <laughs> Sex. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. Well, you have this many kids and things are bound to end up on the floor, no matter how hard you try to keep it clean. 
I spot a terrifying cloth doll that appears to have had both arms pulled off several times. It's been stitched back together a lot. The tag says, C and C, of course. I set that down and spot a houseplant. Hey, little guy. Keep being you, tiny houseplant. I spot one last thing on the floor next to the houseplant. It's a silver necklace. Wow. This looks expensive for something casually tossed on the floor. If there's a story here, it's none of my business. It's been a while. I guess I should go to the kitchen and see what's up. Oh. I walk into the kitchen to find Joseph holding Christy in one arm. She seems a lot calmer than she was a minute ago. I raise an eyebrow at Joseph. The twins are a lot more manageable when they're separated. Where's Christian? He ran off. Christy dips a spoon in the brownie batter and gives it a taste. Dad, it's too sweet. <laughs> You're too sweet. No, I'm not. You're so sweet we might have to water you down with spiders. No, not spiders. Joseph begins tickling Christy with his free hand. Between the laughing and the squirming, I don't know how he's got a hold of her, but that girl is locked in place. This man is a professional child wrangler. Christy fixes me with her best puppy dog eyes. Save me from the spiders! Spoon Duel the Spider King. Renegade option. Alright, I have to see what these are. I grab a wooden spoon and point at Joseph's direction. Unhand her, foul beast. Okay, Vox the Valiant, let's see what you've got. You may have defeated me at Tarantula Ridge, but now I have the upper hand. Joseph gently puts Christi, Christy down behind him. Have you come to squash me, knight? Or have you merely fallen into my web? I'm no mere fly, Spider King. Now on guard! For a minute or so, Joseph and I mock duel with the two dumbest looking spoons in the room. Eventually, I strike a killing blow in the invisible heart between his arm and his body, and Joseph recoils in horror. Last, I'm defeated. You could never best me, Spider King, for I have the power of... I sneak a taste from the brownie batter. The magic. Oh man, that is way too sweet. Christy begins jumping up and down excitedly. My hero! Christy hugs my leg before making a surprisingly fast exit. Oh, yeah. Is this what being a dad is like? That's really, that's, that's so cute. Aww. Hey, wait, do you want to bake big brownies with us? Christy hesitates and shakes her head no again. Mm-mm, Sparkle Pony. Sparkle Pony? Joseph looks confused. You don't want to bake with Dad now? You want to play with Sparkle Pony? Yes. Yeah. Okay, go. Uh, before Joseph can even finish his sentence, Christy is out the door and down the hall. Ahead. Joseph sighs deeply as he stares into the chocolate batter. He tastes it again, face twisting. And that is still way too sweet. So what made that crash? Egg beaters on, lim on linoleum floor. It's my new techno single. Still haven't thought of a B-side. Now we're both looking into the batter. Still got a sickly sheen of sugar and chocolate candies throughout, and I have a feeling Christy had something to do with it. We need a fresh start. Oh, it, yeah, like I said, I'm not really a baker, but don't even sweat it. The bag came with instructions that have mysteriously vanished along with my daughter, so we'll probably be fine. Probably. Yeah, probably. He certainly looks confident. All right, Vox, you've baked a cake from, from a box before. Once. How hard could this be? Now grab a spoon and get ready to rock. Mario Batali, save me. Joseph and I set to work, cracking the eggs and mixing the things, and then pouring the things according to how we assumed the back of the box would tell us to. Things go according to plan, and soon enough we have a solid batch of brownies. Dude. Dude. Whew. Wait, Joseph has a little dot of Joseph has a little dot of batter on his nose. Wow, well, Fox, where do you use those dad skills? I bet you've baked a few box mixes in your time. His nose, Joseph. <laughs> All we have to do is bring these to the bake sale, and voila, duty done. Um, now help me find Christy. Keep your eye out for a pony that sparkles. Joseph, hold still. What? Thumb in position. And got it. Joseph's eyes go wide as I gently wipe the chocolate off his nose. Is he? Blushing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. No problem. In less than a second, I've licked the batter off my finger. It's really good batter. We, uh... We should find Christy. Yes, yes, we should. Do that, Vox. Mm. Joseph quickly composes himself. All right, you can't be that far. You take the delta position and I'll watch your six. You even know what that means? Half a tango sparkle. Roger, roger. Roger, roger. Joseph starts making his way down the hall and calls back to me. Take the brownies and the rest of the stuff I baked earlier today while I get Christy. I'll meet you by the car. Yeah. This man has so many repressed thoughts of cock. This man wakes up and he thinks about cock. He goes to sleep and he thinks about cock. This man goes to work and he thinks about cock. There is nothing that he can think about. His mind is always full 
There are cocks in his ears, cocks in both of his eyes, and up his nose. There's nothing that he wants more in life, but he cannot have it because he is a good Christian man with a wife. Such is the tragedy of Dream Daddy. I can't believe we're getting into a character with this much drama! It's brilliant! Kuma, thank you, and Gloves, thank you very much for the super- it, It's just, we, we get, we're, we're going, we're going out of our way. This man is gonna be fucking desperate for it. We, we have to be the good man here. We have to encourage him not- We have to encourage him to divorce his wife first, and then we can marry him. Don't wanna, don't wanna, don't, don't, don't wanna corrupt this good man. Only a little. Only to the point where morally he can handle it. You know. Because we wouldn't want him going away with feelings of guilt. We want him going away with feelings of naughty excitement, you know what I'm saying? Joseph, Christie and I arrive at the church parking lot to find fold-out tables and pop-up tents already set up. Looks like the bake sale is already in full swing. Wow, this place is packed. Is this... packed? There are a few people milling around. Must be a value pack. If you can count a city's population on your fingers and toes, this counts as packed. Point. Christie rockets out of the car and into the lot. Is she running on jet fuel? I want to sell brownies. Okay, okay, let's get set up. I want to see Mom. She's down by the other road tables helping out with another group. Wanna go over there and tell her I said hi? Mom! Christy zips off immediately. Joseph seems unconcerned. Does she always run that fast? Yeah, but I can only catch her in half the time. These knees aren't where they used to be. I remember when Amanda was her age. I couldn't get her to sit still for five seconds. Yep, great age to deal with. While Christy's gone, Joseph and I arrange all of our baked goods on the table and settle in. So, are we allowed to eat any of our own goods? Look, I don't see nothing, I don't say nothing. Man upstairs has strong feelings about snitches. Does he actually? Joseph shrugs. Eats a brownie. <laughs> it looks like some of the other stalls are selling drinks. Little handmade crafts and other sweets. Whoa, someone brought a soft serve ice cream machine. I gesture to it. How are we supposed to compete with that? Please, this isn't my first time to the rodeo. The bake sale rodeo. There's actually no rodeo here. It's just a bake sale. I think you and I put together can make one pretty convincing argument for these brownies, don't you? Sneak on the brownie to ease your fear of public interaction. Oh. He seems upset. I reach for another brownie to stress eat my worries away. He smacks my hand before I can grab it. Fuck. 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 I thought it'd be funny. I thought he'd find that funny. Oh, oh yeah. What about I hope so? What about, I hope so. Mufang, thank you very much for the gifted. There we go. Oh, it's the same thing. Joseph gives me a reassuring pat on the shoulder. If you bake it, then we'll come. Not long before we have our first customers. Hey, dude. Hiya. Mad, come and see me. Great to see you guys out here. Happy to support a good cause. Plus, you know, as the owner and proprietor of the Coffee Spoon, an establishment that specializes in baked goods, I have to scope out the competition. Joseph leans close to me. This guy knows his stuff. Stay on your toes. So, what recipe did you use for these brownies? Don't say use the box recipe. Don't say use the box recipe. Just like how Nani used to make. Let me tell you a story, Matt. The way they made brownies in the old country, yeah, it's all thanks to Grand, Grand Makuma. Travelers from far and wide would make the pilgrimage to a sleepy little town simply to be amazed by her masterful use of chocolate. All that knowledge and all that experience passed on to me. Ha, <laughs> sure. Joseph leans over again to me, lying as lich. Oh, fuck! 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 I thought it'd be funny! Damn it! I'm not- I, Get Robert out of your fucking skull, man! Get Robert out of your head! You can't do the same things that you did with Robert with this good Christian man! Boom, 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 boom. Alright. Okay. We improvised. I just let the baking spirit move through me, you know? A little bit of flour here, pinch of salt there. Sort of like interpretive dance, but with cooking. See, there you go, he likes that. Interpretive cooking, yes. You can never make the same thing twice. Every batch is special. There'll never be another batch of brownies with the exact same flavor sensation that these right here have. It's once in a lifetime opportunity, man. Oh. All right, all right. We'll take two. Actually, we'll take three. I ring them up and high five Joseph as our happy customers walk away. <laughs> See, not so hard. Yeah, I'm hot off the good feelings from the last sale. Who's next? We sell brownies to a bunch of people I don't recognize, but who clearly know Joseph. Eventually, another familiar face pops up. Vox! Oh, it's Brian here to show off yet again. It's Brian. Close enough. Can we interest you two in any of our fine sweets and treats? 
Yeah, sure, Khan. I bet I could eat ten brownies. Must resist urge to be competitive. Let the man. But I could eat. Ah, okay. Well, I don't want to upset Joseph, but I want to be. I, I need to embrace the facts that I. Used to call me Brian Hollow Legs Harding back when I was in the competitive circuit. Think you could go brownie for brownie with me? Twelve brownies. Oh. Fuck no! 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 Go back! Go back! Go back! <laughs> go back! Go back! So we'll put you down for ten. Ah, better make it just two. One for me and one for Daisy. Coming right up. You excited for a youth group movie night, Daisy? Yeah. What's the movie? It's a surprise. Joseph leans over to me. It's the Fast and Furious. Really? If you think about it, there's some really heavy religious undertones. Joseph hands a baggie to Daisy. The one thing about Dream Daddy is about family. 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 Mm. Make sure to give you guys the edges. Clearly the most superior part of the brownie topography. Thanks, Joseph. One, two customers. Our, oh, our two customers walk off with our purchases. Joseph and I survey our stock. These are selling pretty hard. At this rate, we'll have enough money to pay for a new paint job on the church pews in no time. Wait, what happened to the pews? Oh. Ernest spray painted his rapper alias onto them. Young Steinbeck. <laughs> <laughs> Young Steinbeck. I would have gone for young man in the sea, but I can respect that. <laughs> that is actually really fucking clever. Speaking in ministerial terms, Ernest is hard to reach. In father terms, Ernest is kind of a turd. Being a cool youth minister seems like a lot of work. It is, but it's worth it. Although, sometimes I wish... Never mind. What? It's kind of silly, but... Remember wish you could just drop everything and go lounge around at a beach somewhere in the tropics? Drink fruity, blended beverages, fall asleep on a hammock, you know. Basically glim out a Jimmy Buffett song. Joseph, I think about this every single day of my life. My dream is to live in Margaritaville. <laughs> one day, my friend, one day we'll be on island time. We make a couple more sales to some more church patrons. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Off in the distance, I spot my old buddy, Craig. Uh, Craig! Hi. He's going to be a hard sell. Craig's a fitness man. I think he comes to these bake sales to test himself. See if he has the resolve to refuse processed sugar. You sure you're ready for this? We go way back. I got this. Craig jogs up to our table with Briar and Hazel in tow. They're each finishing an ice cream cone, so it's unlikely we're going to sell them on brownies, too. Probably won't be able to sell to the baby. She's impossible to read. <laughs> it all comes down to Craig. Hey, bros. Hi, Uncle Joseph. Hi, Amanda's dad. Would you be interested in one of our delicious homemade brownies? Hmm, I don't know. This ought to be funny. Hey, Craig, when we were freshmen, remember how our next-door neighbors pranked us by switching out our laundry detergent with dish soap? Dish soap! And how the washing machine exploded with suds? And then we decided to get back at them by baking brownies for them, but sprinkling high-intensity hot sauce into the mix and we watched them cry after eating it? <laughs> I'd feel bad if we had to clean up the laundry room ourselves. Anyway, these brownies are like that, but without the hot sauce. Maybe you should get one more, for old time's sake. Craig thinks for a second. Well, the girls just won a game. You know what? We'll take one for each of us. Even River? I'll eat hers. <laughs> Let's fucking go, baby! You've got yourself a deal. The day winds down and we're pretty much out of items to sell. Everyone starts packing up. Christy eventually comes back and immediately falls asleep in Joseph's folding chair. Box mix, huh? Oh, it's Mary. Mary saunters up to us and she looks like she'd rather be anywhere else than here. Oh, hi, honey. Yeah, they're selling hotcakes, which is actually, they're, they're just brownies. Cute and boring and safe. Um, hey, Mary. Mary's eyes dart over to me. What's the rookie doing here? I was just hoping to introduce Vox to the rest of our community. Uh-huh. You got a load of this freak show? What? Hey. Weird folk is all. Holier than thou types. Mm. Don't you think, Vox? Uh, Mary. Ugh. Let the kid answer the question. Uh... Shove a brownie in your mouth so you can't. <laughs> they seem nice. They're, uh... They all seem like they're really excited to help out the church. That's pretty cool, I guess. <sighs> Mary, 
can we talk about this later? Oh, I am embar- Oh, am I embarrassing you in front of your new friend? Joseph doesn't respond, trying his hardest to keep his cool. Yep, 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 I see what's going on here. Can we please talk about this later? Sure thing, honey bear. Huh? Mary turns her attention to me. Hand over the cash. I... Hey. Jesus, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm in charge of the funds here. I hand over the cash we've made. Feels like a hefty wad, if I may say so myself. Hmm. Thanks. Huh? Now give me a wallet. What? Hey. Give me a wallet. You think this church is going to fix itself? Huh? Mary. Hmm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry, I'll work on the whole pretending to be happy thing. Mary leans in and whispers to me. Hmm. He's really good at it. Oh, I wonder what he might be pretending to be happy about because of. Oh, I wonder. Mary walks off without saying goodbye. Yeesh. Um, I'm really sorry about that. The brownie will alleviate the, siege, the situation. I take a brownie and split it in half, offering it to Joseph. He takes it, we eat. How does that feel? See, I knew that would be the right answer. Better. You ready to head out? Joseph and I load the folding tables back into my car. Christy nods off the moment Joseph stra straps her into the car seat. Ooh. I drop Joseph off in front. That's, that's his voice. I drop Joseph off in front of his house. A small yawn sneaks out of me. Oh. Looks like I tuckered you out, huh? I'm a sleepy dad. I think I might finally be crashing from all the sugar. Oh. <laughs> I won't keep you up then. Oh. Thanks for helping out today. Happy to do it. Also, happy to eat brownies. Oh. Well... Next time, I promise we'll do something a bit more exciting and a bit less free labor. And I'm very sorry about the whole thing with Mary. You shouldn't have had to see that. It's fine, really. I know, but first hangout domestic problems aren't a good look. You barely know me. Let me make it up to you next time. We'll be Margaritaville, but we'll do something fun. Promise. I smile. I'd like that. Right. Oh, and one last thing. Joseph tosses a cling-wrapped brownie through the window. It hits me in the face, but I'm able to catch it. It's the last one. You earned it. Joseph, please don't leave me alone with this brownie. Nope, too late. I'm already walking away. But, <laughs> bye. Joseph walks up to his home. He waves at me before carrying Christy inside. Well, looks like it's just you and me, brownie. Force the brownie down my gullet, knowing full well this will be my undoing. I will feel this later. I step inside to find Amanda doing homework on the couch. Hey, father unit. Hi, child that I'm required by law to care for. How's homework? It's really fun and educational. Really? Yeah. How long have you known me for? Right. Mm -hmm. How was the bake sale? Good. I think I really could have made a good life for myself as a brownie salesman. Oh. Glad to hear it. So. So what? Mm. Were there any extra brownies? Or did you maybe sneak one? Or... Sorry, kid. No way! No, I want to give Amanda the brownie! No, I want to give Amanda the brownie! Go back! I'm gonna give Amanda the brownie! I'm gonna give Amanda the brownie, she deserves it! Pocket the brownie! Might come in handy down the road! Fuck! Wait! I thought it was gonna go to the choice! Fuck! Wait, wait, go back, go back! No, 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 go back, go back, go back! Do I get an S rank? Probably not. We go back, we go back, we go back, don't worry. I thought it would give me a choice. S rank! Fuck yeah, baby! I'm so good at seducing good Christian dads. Alright, hold on. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Load, 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 load. We have to give- this is the most important thing in the fucking galaxy. We have to give Amanda the brownie. Save the brownie for later. Alright, there we go. Uh, blah, da, da. How's homework? It's really fun, educational. Uh, how long you know me for? How was the bake sale? Glad to hear it. Uh, so, any other brownies? Were there any extra brownies, or did you maybe sneak one? Or? I think for a moment I realized I still have the brownie that Joseph gave me. This would probably do better in someone else's stomach than mine. Heads up! Wait! I hurl the brownie towards Amanda. <laughs> Zoom! It hits the wall behind her and falls on the ground. Nice throw. She scoops it up and smiles at me. Hey. Thanks, Pops. Hey, if you're not going to bed anytime soon, would you be game for some real shark hunters or, or of Orange County? I thought the last hunter got eaten by a shark. Mm. He did. I sit down next to her and cozy up with a blanket. Awesome. What a lovely day. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day. 
Hmm. Bada bing, bada boom, that's an S rank, baby. This fall into your eyes. I just fall into your eyes too, big guy. Hey. Welcome. You've got dads. You've got dads. DB? Who's this? Vox, listen, this is you from the past. Whoa, how did this happen? I figure you're trying to reply to this because I know myself, but this is an automated message from you earlier this morning when it was socially unacceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I forgot how, how I did that as well. The future is amazing. Listen, life is short and ice cream should always be acceptable, but unfortunately, this isn't the society we live in. And it's less the society we live in and more projecting my own anxiety about being judged onto others. But you know what I mean. By the time you're reading this, it is a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you for going out and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Be good, me. Buy that ice cream! You know what? I've earned a treat. On the way home, I decided to stop off and grab some ice cream, which I fully plan to eat directly from the tub. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out just which ice type of ice cream I'd like to eat directly from the tub. Rocky Road, pistachio. Ooh, Amanda's probably going to want some too. Better get two tubs. She loves cookie dough ice cream, right? Hey, mister. Ernest! Turn around to see Ernest leaning up against the wall of the convenience store. Ernest? You're cool. I, hang on. I, I need to give this kid the squeaky voice teen, right? Okay. <clears throat> You're cool, right? So cool. Shocked you even had to ask, dude meister. Oh my god, I asked the wrong person. Could you just help me out? Help you out? There's no fire involved, is there? Just clouds. So if I give you $20, will you buy me e-liquid? Ernest, what's e-liquid? It's like, uh, Gatorade. You know, electrolyte liquid. I can get it myself, but I'm banned from here for trying to run a grift on the cashier. A classic fiddle game. You know the deal. You know. Oh, would you like fries with that? Oh, if you're talking about balanced electrolytes, then I got you, little buddy. And I didn't know you played the fiddle. Hmm. Just ask the clerk for bl for blue Krenz Apple Vortex. You'll know what it is. Pick up a tub of pistachio ice cream for myself and a tub of cookie dough for Amanda. Search around for some blue craze and void starer, but I can't seem to find any. I turned to the cashier. Say, where's your finest e-liquid? Behind the counter. You got ID? First of all, my daughter is older than you. Second of all, I'm flattered. I sh switched shampoo recently. Is that taking some years off? Look, you need to be 21 to buy vape juice. Your hair doesn't look a day over 20. Wait a minute. Are you just trying to butter me up to get me to buy more ice cream? Because it's working. I glance outside and spot Ernest staring at me. Double wait a minute! <laughs> so you're telling me that e-liquid is not a sports drink? It's for vaping. Ernest is watching us intently through the window. I better go give that kid a piece of my mind. I see. Okay, look. I'm gonna pretend you didn't try to trick me into buying you the old Baphomet's cough syrup and then go in and, uh, bleh, 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 and then go inside here to purchase my ice cream. I won't tell your dad if you promise to scram. And stop vaping, you'll get popcorn lung. What if I give you $25? Go home, Ernest. As I'm walking back inside, Ernest calls after me. You can get popcorn lung from microwave popcorn, you know! I no longer trust this child, but the notion strikes fear into my heart. I go back inside to complete my purchase with a good cashier. Thank you, kind sir, for your time and generous hair compliments. You got it, bub. I glance out the window to see Ernest still outside. Looks like he's talking to some other poor sap. Guess I should go outside and save this other guy some grief. Wait a second. That's definitely a cop. Oh, boy. I grab my tubs of ice cream and bolt outside. Ernest is already face down on the hood of a squad car. Ernest, did you seriously just try and get a cop to buy you e-liquid? You know this kid? Uh, I'm friends with his dad. Uh, yeah, we live in the same cul-de-sac. I know his dad. Listen, he's a good kid, and I'm... What? What? Okay, first of all, he's like, for, for, for a brief second, I believed it. I was like, is Hugo going to be here? What? But no, he's he's just trying to get the kid off. You know, get him get him off like 
getting arrested. I turn around and see Robert walking up the street and toward the convenience store. Ernest, what are you doing? I want a lawyer. First of all, good first instinct. Remember that you're not required to answer any questions from a police officer without a lawyer present. You're this boy's father. Uh, hang on, what's my, I'll do Chief Wiggum. You're this boy's father? Yes, sir. Ernest likes to lash out at me like this ever since the accident. Oh, um, I don't like talking about it. That's fine. Robert gets a wistful twinkle in his eye. It all started seven summers ago. My hair was long then. New metal was still in style. Ernest and I were down in the Florida swampland, scavenging for- Sure. I can leave you to take it from here. Sounds good. Thanks, officer. Ernest, come along now. You'll be cleaning grout from the rain gutter for a week thanks to this transgression. The police officer gets in his car and drives off. I'm stunned by how cool Robert was just there. Thanks. I just want to say, Richard. Ouch. Don't mention it, Hemingway. Got tr- got him tr- pl- blah, 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 blah. Got in trouble plenty of times in my life. Just trying to do my good deed for the day. Will you buy me e-liquid if I give you $20? Child, I will end you. Hey, Vox. You walk Ernest home with me? Sure. Hey. Ernest runs ahead, presumably so he won't be seen with us, which is a thing I think kids do. It reminds me a lot of myself when I was his age. Uh-huh. Well, maybe I wasn't as dumb. Seems like he tortures his dad. Hey. Seems like he tortures just about everybody. He even stole your wallet. What? No, he d- I pat my back pocket. I pat the rest of my pockets. He stole my wallet. Mm. Why are you doing this to yourself? Hey, what? Huh. Robert points at my tubs of ice cream. Uh, one of them's for Amanda. Hey. I have no qualms with the quantity of ice cream you purchased. It's a perfectly respectable amount of ice cream. It's the quality I'm talking about. That is so fucking him! Un- apart from when he drinks Jack Daniels. You work hard, Fox. You're a good dad. Don't you think you deserve top shelf ice cream? But these were on sale. You're gonna treat yourself. Go big or go home. Real vanilla bean. Real pistachio. You deserve it. We arrive at the cul-de-sac. We arrive at the cul-de-sac and Ernest runs into his home. That boy is the reason why we don't have prizes in cereal anymore. (laughs) Get your own, Fox. Robert tosses me my wallet. I catch it with a surprised look on my face. I stole it back. Keep it in your front pocket or use a chain like back in your scar days. Smell you later. See you, Robert. Smell you later. I go back inside my home, ready to spend the rest of the night with two tubs of ice cream and also Amanda. Fun, okay. Welcome. You've got Interesting. That's another scene with Robert I wasn't expecting to get to do. Hmm, okay. Uh, I really have to pee. I'm going to be right back. I'm 
You motherfuckers kissing without me again? You motherfuckers enjoying some quiet time? Well, you can enjoy each other's company. I'm about to enjoy the company of a good Christian dad who I believe is experiencing a lot of symptoms of cock craving. Here we go. Boom. Oh, loads of gifted. Thank you very much. Kimiko, Reagan, Red Aster, and Rachel Shen. Thank you so much for the gifted. That's so kind. Whew. It's been a long day of clipping coupons. Looks like there's a sale on boxed brownie mix. Hmm. That reminds me. I wonder what Joseph's up to. I should see if he wants to hang out. Or if he wants to go to the store with me and use these coupons. Looks like he's online. Hey, Joseph. Wanna hang? It takes a moment for, for Joseph to respond. Vox! Hope you finally recovered from your brownie-induced coma. And I know I promised you a fun hang, but actually tonight I'm... But tonight I'm actually chaperoning a youth group mixer. Amanda's invited, of course. If you're not doing anything, you should come. Oh, that sounds nice. And be a chaperone with me, because I need the help. Less nice. I think for a moment. I'm a little bummed out, of course. I suppose I just wanted some Joseph and me time. Maybe to get to know him a little better. Ah, what the heck. My friend needs my help. I type back. Buddy, if you need me, you got me. Just tell me where I need to be tonight. Joseph lets me know the details. It starts pretty soon. I should get ready. Bim, 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 bim. I knock on Amanda's door and peek in. Hey, Amanda. I'm about to head out. Right. Where are you off to? You gonna go extreme couponing? Hmm. I'm actually gonna go chaperone this youth mixer dance thing that's happening at Joseph's church. He says you're invited, but if you don't want to come, I'll cover for you. Hmm... You know what? I'm down. Maybe I can make some new friends. That's a good attitude. But I'll have you know I'm mostly doing this for the potential of free food. Thank you, Amanda. You get four daughter points today. Can I trade them in for a daughter lava lamp? Sorry, you only have enough for a daughter spider ring. Or some of those daughter plastic jumpy frogs. I like those things. They try their hardest. It's inspirational. Hmm. We arrive at the church to find that nobody's there. <laughs> Oh, I'm about to go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm about to go. <laughs> I can't help but read this in Peach's voice. Jesus is coming. Okay, thanks for the gifted. Hmm. I've been to a couple dances in my life, and not that I want to paint myself as some sort of dance expert, but generally, dances require people. And those people need to be dancing. All of a sudden, Joseph jogs up to us. He looks frazzled. You're here. I need your help. Joseph gestures to the hand-painted banner hanging above the church doors. It reads, Jesus is coming. Yikes. Well, that's certainly a thing. God made all things, Amanda. Except for the banner. Ernest made that. I genuinely can't tell if he meant that maliciously or if he just can't spell good. You know what God also does? Forgives. He forgives teenagers and he never, ever breaks their box mods. You're gonna break Ernest's- Are you gonna break Ernest's box mod? No, Amanda. That would be a sin. I think. It's the one right after Sloth. Yeah. Vox, I need your help getting this down before anyone sees it. I can swing that. Amanda, can you help? Physical labor, huh? Hmm. Amanda begins rapidly scanning the most empty room, looking for an escape route of her own. I have to go set up the food. Food's already set up. I'm going to do a final inspection pass on the food to make sure it's up to code. I'm going to eat your food. Amanda's able to bolt away before myself or Joseph can get another word in. Huh. She can really book it when she wants to. Her father was a giant pair of legs. I dated some giant arms once. Turns out they were all right. <laughs> you must have been devastated. 
It was Armageddon. No, it's... I get it. I'll workshop it. There's a gem in there somewhere. I'm really glad you're here, Vox. You enjoying my company, or did you just lure me out here for my strong arms and hide advantage? A little bit of both. It's always something with you, Joseph. Something handsome and pious? You're not that pious. Debatable. You just alluded to breaking your child's vape pen. I would have lost the debate. You ready to do this? Let's make some magic happen. Magic isn't real, Vox. God said that. God was also a well, God was also a bush one time. True. Joseph and I grab a stepladder and walk over to Ernest's banner. That turd, Ernest. That turd, Ernest, had one final trick up his sleeve. Looks like this nightmare is stapled and taped six ways from Sunday. Any ideas? Oh, Kirk Douglas. <laughs> this man is, is this, this man is growing on me more and more each passing minute. What happened? What happened to your strong arms and height advantage? Ah, right. I forgot about those. But I realize my oversized dad fingers are far too large to get leverage on the tiny staples. You got a hammer? Ah, I get the voice mixed up. You got a hammer I can use to pry these off? Fox, this is a church. We get a little nervous around hammers and nails. I'm kidding. We, we just don't have a hammer. But we have to hurry. The use will be here any minute. And I'll never hear the end of it if we don't fix this. Wait. I have an idea. I run to grab the marker that Eunice, the, the Eunice, the Ernest used to draw this thing and jump back on the ladder. We can't get it down, but we can send a different message. We've only got one shot here. Let's do this right. Jesus is coming. Jesus isn't coming. Jesus is cumin. Jesus isn't coming. Jesus is calming. Am I the only one who thinks that you could just do a little circle up there and turn it into the correct word? But then again, all of these are a lot more funny. I want to see what happens with all these. Jesus is cumin. Managed to compu completely cover the G with the marker. No one will be the wiser. See? Like, Jesus is cumin. The spice. Because, you know, he's, he's all things. Even, even the thing of spice in your spice rack. This is a loose cannon interpretation of my religious doctrine. Well, at least he's not coming. Why didn't you just turn the U into an O? Great idea. There we go. Change the U into an O. Jesus is coming. Folksy. Let's just hope the youths don't notice. Joseph checks his watch. Hmm. DJ should be here by now. Hold on, I'm gonna check what the other ones do, because this is funny. <laughs> okay, Jesus isn't coming. I quickly scribble my addition to the banner with some creative usage of space. Ta-da! Now he isn't coming. That doesn't really take care of the sexy connotation. Uh... I guess I should have thought this one out more. You really could have just turned that U into an O. Wait, you're right. I take the marker and fill in the U. Is that better? Jesus isn't coming? Hey, oh. Let's just hope the U's don't notice. Alright, definitely not the best one. Let's have a look at the last one. Jesus is calming. I'm able to turn the U into an A and an L, somehow. It's a little tight, but it works. Well, that's true, I guess. Bask in his calming press of Joseph. Relax. Crisis averted. Let's just hope the youths don't notice. Joseph checks his watch. Hmm. The DJ should be here by now. Just then, it's this fucking guy. The doors swing open and a man struts in with his DJing equipment. Wait, you're not the usual guy. What happened to Evan? Evan knew exactly when to play the Cupid Shuffle. Hey, hey, I am not Evan. Evan sold all of his DJ equipment to backpack through Europe, so I'm filling in for him. I do envy him, though. What I would give to drop everything and start over. <laughs> Are you... all right? All right! I'm better than all right! I'm DJ Spin Master Quinn! He sighs heavily. <sighs> I usually do trivia nights, but I moonlight on the ones and twos to give myself a sense of purpose in life. Is he... okay? Well, you'll have to do. You have a playlist of fun songs that youths will like that won't inspire impure thoughts or tempt them to the dark side, right? Bang, bang. bang. The DJ thinks for a bang, moment. Bang. <laughs> well, hey, believe me, buddy, I've got what you need. Okay, great. I'll let you get set up. The DJ leaves. Let's keep an eye on this one. He sounded like he was going to play Creep by Radiohead on repeat. Definitely the kind of person to play, like, the non-clean version 
of a of a song, you know? <laughs> I have I have a really I have a really distinct memory of this. So when I was like when I was like getting getting my formal education, right? Um, obviously because I was like old, most of it I did at school, but I actually used to go into my local school to like help out with events and stuff. Like I would sort of fit in with the teachers and the parents and stuff. And I would sort of be like, yeah, you know, and, and I would sort of help out with that stuff. I remember something exactly like this happened once, right? It was like a school fair or it was one of those ones where, where everyone is sort of like, you know, there's got, they got like tables out. They've got like the little cakes and stuff and there's like face painting and stuff like that. And so, you know, everyone was sort of, everyone was sort of filling in and it was great. And there's a DJ. It wasn't really a DJ. I think it was just someone's kid with Spotify on their phone, just communicating with a speaker, right? And then you guys know the song, Forget You. You guys know the original version of the song? <laughs> well, I believe that this poor kid, whether intentionally or unintentionally, definitely played the wrong version of the song. So you had this whole crowd of people, all of these very good Christian parents and their very good Christian children, and all of these teachers and everybody just sat around having a very good G-rated School fate, school fair, whatever they, whatever you call it. See you driving round town with a girl I love, and I'm like, fuck you! And uh, the collective gasp that swept just <gasps> across the entire schoolyard. It was, I will remember it for the rest of my life. One of the greatest things that I have ever been witness to in my life. And you can see one or two more of these teachers suddenly start going and it was like up a little hill where they were sat right with the speakers and so they were running up like turn it off turn it off and the kids suddenly started panicking and they were like Aah! and it was it stayed on for longer than it should have stayed on essentially and uh, it was a it was a great moment it was fantastic anyway after some time kids from the community start filing into the dance hall some of them seem to notice our sign hack but they don't seem to care most of the kids group off into tiny clusters, standing in circles and casting sideways glances at the other groups of teens. Man, I do not miss being a teenager at social functions. Hey, hey, party people! Everyone in the room turns their attention to the DJ. Hey, DJ Spin Master Quinn coming at you with the sound that the people want. We're off to a good start. This next tune goes out to all the ladies in the audience. Ladies, let me hear you say yeah! A few half-hearted yes echo through the crowd. All right, he sighs again. I am, um, man, it's been a heavy couple days. This next one's actually just for my wife, Sandra. Hope we can work things out, my little honeysuckle vine. The DJ begins playing Creep by Radiohead. Uh, Amanda sidles up to me, pizza in one hand and punch in the other. Creep, huh? Bold choice for a youth group. Let's see where he goes with this. After the song finishes, he plays Creep again. Is the DJ crying? If you watch the kids really closely, you can catch them cringe every time Tom York swears. Ah. There they go. <laughs> Maybe we should do something about this. Joseph runs up to us. He's killing the vibe. They're listening to swears, sad swears. We have to do something. You guys should give him a pep talk. Maybe work him up to Everybody Hurts. Maybe, maybe work him up to Everybody Hurts by Rem, or the very least No Rain by Blind Melon. You want to help us cheer him up? Uh... Actually, I just saw my friend, uh, Fred, Frederick, Frederico. Frederico? He's from, he's from Latin. I didn't know you were taking a Latin class. Mm. I'm not. So he's from the country Latin. Aww. Yes, it exists. Don't Google it. You can go, Amanda. It's fine. And she's gone. Joseph and I make our way to the DJ, move, <laughs> DJ booth where Spin Master Quaid is having a quiet cry. Hey, bud. All right. Hey, hey, my dudes. How's the party jamming? Oh. It's, uh, not... Oh, I'm sorry, fellas. I've just taken a moment to find my groove. Gotta play the sad tunes to properly appreciate the bangers, right? Babbing. Play the booty bumpers. It's what she's... This is not the right option, but I have to I have to know. Listen, buddy. This is a church function. Songs you're playing seem a bit much, don't you think? It's kind of bringing everyone down. She put on some top 40 stuff. Lift everyone's spirits. When everyone's dancing and happy, that it uh, makes the good Lord happy. Right, Joseph? Oh. That was right? We didn't say anything about booty bumpers, unfortunately. 
The good Lord does love a song that slaps. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta try this again. We gotta try this again. Okay, that's rude. That's not how the force works. Now stop me if I'm out of line here since I've never been a DJ and don't have any current plans to become one. But I don't think that's how it works. The kids came out here to have a good time. You gotta cool it on the sadness. There you go. Hey, buddy. It's problems you're having with. Joseph leans in close to me. What was his wife's name again? Sandra. If you're having problems with Sandra, I can help you too. I do counseling. It's my job here. and I'm very good at it. Oh. I don't know. I can tell that you're hurting. Nobody voluntarily listens to that much Radiohead on repeat, unless they're really going through some tough times. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> I am so sad. Joseph places a hand on Spin Master Quinn's shoulder, who immediately collapses into Joseph's embrace, crying quietly. There, there, bud. It's gonna be okay. Thank you. I'll put on some dance hall album anthems. You're the best, Spin Master Quinn. With yet another crisis averted, Joseph and I return to the dance floor, where Amanda's waiting with an ice cream cone. They have ice cream here. Good work, Amanda. How's it looking out there? Well, for a dance, there's not a lot of dancing. Looks like people are starting to bail, though. This is a disaster. Yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself. This ice cream, top notch. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, Fox. You and Amanda should just go home. I'm not going to make you stay here for the train wreck. It's not a disaster. We can still fix this. We can... I suddenly realize what we have to do. Amanda, get out of here. I don't think you're going to want to be here for this. Or be seen with me after this. Are we going to dance? Oh, God, you're not going to... We, we, it's dad dancing, of course. How could I have been so foolish? I throw my car keys to Amanda. I'll get a ride back with Joseph. Just remember me as I am right now. Not as of what I'm about to become. Amanda nods. Nice knowing you, pops. She runs out the door. <laughs> Joseph, I'm going to turn it up on the dance floor. With luck, we can get these youths into it as well. Are you in? Are you in? Or are you out? Joseph stares at me. He knows what has to be done as much as I do. See you on the other side. See you on the other side. Is it going to be a fucking rhythm game? Joseph and I walk out onto the dance floor in the middle of the room. The youths all stare at us, unsure of what we're doing. Time to get our groove on. Start him off easy and work our way up to the more technical stuff. Start with the lawnmower, roll the dice, or the worm. Okay. Start with the lawnmower. Start with something easy. Let's not go straight into the worm, because if we go straight into the worm, we might pull something. You know, we're not young men anymore. Thanks, Fab Family, for the gifted. All right, let's rip start this baby. I'll start lawn mowing the dance floor. Joseph seems to respond to that and decides to mow another patch of grass on the dance floor. That's the stuff. I look around. Well, looks like we've got everyone's attention. All right, Vox, let's turn up the heat. Sprinkler. Running man. Listen, as a... As a dad dance, I feel that the sprinkler is a great go-to. Pull out the classic. Hand behind head. Point figure out. I point... I point at and make direct eye contact with several of the youths in the room. I think that makes them feel uncomfortable, but I push past it. Joseph understands. We must water the lawn. We just came off the end of an imaginary drought and the grass is dying. Don't worry, imaginary grass. We got you. I look around to the youths. They're getting into it. Nice work, but we better keep it- We better pick it up or they'll lose interest quick. Cabbage patch. The windmill. Hammer slide. Ooh. Solid options. It's gotta be the windmill. <laughs> I've seen breakdancers do this, so it shouldn't be too hard. I drop to the floor and try to spin my legs around. I am sure this does not look appealing. Uh, it doesn't look appealing. I look around at the youths. They are not appealed. They're not looking too lively, but we can still turn it around. Moonwalk! Twerking! Terrible fucking idea. But a ch Moonwalk. It's gotta be the moonwalk. I start sliding my feet backwards. I can't tell if this looks good or not, but I think these kids have seen enough people doing moonwalks that they understand the general concept. Joseph makes a moonwalk attempt as well. Surprisingly, dude pulls it off flawlessly. I look around to the youths. They're cheering! Alright, time for the big finish. Attempt an unrehearsed backflip. <laughs> Let's do that fucking, that fucking vine of like the, the guy tries to backflip and goes, Oh shit! Lift Joseph up. Dirty dog! <gasps> or a death mm. These are, ooh, ooh. We have to see what happens. I mean, they're youths. 
They're gonna be they're gonna be into a homoerotic interaction between two dads. I approach Joseph and motion that I'm about to lift him up. Are, are you strong enough to do that? I don't know! Without regard for human safety, I summon all of my might and lift Joseph above my head! It isn't quite dirty dancing, but Joseph is a good sport and spreads his arms while I spin him in a circle. Look at the crowd. They seem to love it! Somewhat obligingly, the kids take the dance floor and start to move around. Before long, they're starting to laugh and enjoy themselves. It was dicey, but we've done our jobs. Come on, the rest of the chaperones will take it from here. What? I have something to show you. Joseph leads me out of the main room and down various darkened corridors of the church. I can barely see anything and find myself tripping over my own feet. Joseph, I think I- Joseph! I think I lost you! His hand finds mine in the darkness. I'm right here. Lady can't see me blush. We keep walking. Where- where are we? This church is huge. We're almost there. I actually have to admit that I was a little dishonest with you. I didn't just invite you out here to help me chaperone. <gasps> what? No. I thought you were a good Christian man. Uh? What happened to lying being one of the ten things you're not supposed to do? I think there is an exception for when you're trying to surprise a friend. Joseph closes the door behind us. I guess we're in a random room in the depths of this church now. What could he possibly have planned? So, last time we talked about escaping to an island where we could live out an easy tropical lifestyle. Our only worry is trying to find that last shaker of salt. Since we can't actually do that, I figured I could bring a little bit of the tropics to Maple Bay. It's not quite Margaritaville, but something like it. Joseph throws on the lights. Oh my god, look at this! That's so cute! He's got a margarita zone set up. It says it on the board. He's got good handwriting. It's a little thing. A little lemon or a lime or whichever. Welcome to the margarita zone. I look around as my eyes adjust to the light. It's his office, but there are twinkle lights strung across the walls. Little garlands of fake flowers and two beach chairs set up in front of the desk. There's a blender and two glasses sitting on the table. Ukulele music plays softly in the background. Joseph, this is... This is amazing. There's no pop-tops to step on here, buddy. He did this for me? Joseph takes a seat and gestures for me to do the same. He did this for us. I think we both earned it. This man is such a sweetheart! I settle in while Joseph pours us both margaritas. He's out of, He's going out of his way to set all of this up! I mean I mean it when, you, when, when I say that if this happened to me in real life, like if someone that I had a crush on surprised me with something this elaborate, I'd be like... I settle in while Joseph pours us both margaritas. You really went all out. I have a flair for the dramatic, and you can't lead the community if you don't know how to make a good mar mar l -l 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 margarita. I take a sip of mine. This is a killer margarita. I would follow this man. You think the dance is gonna go okay with us without our sick dance moves? No, not here. You're missing the point of Margarita Zone. Margarita Zone is a place of rest and relaxation. It's a place where you can kick your feet up. Forget about your worries for a while. Watch out for blown out flip flops. Let's get tattoos of Mexican cuties. It's heaven on earth with an onion slice. Mm. What the fuck? Oh no. Cheeseburger in paradise. Damn it. Cheeseburger in paradise. Okay. Try it. Got that old man. Yeah. Save. There you go. It's a real fear. Thankfully, no heels will get cut in my version of Margarita Zone. Joseph gestures to the makeshift island bar he's made. You know, it's funny. This reminds me of so much of when I was younger. I've been meaning to ask, what did you do before you started preaching? It's uninteresting. I left home young and got into a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? Trouble meant I got to go wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I hitchhiked around the country, went on adventures, and met all kinds of people. Did some stuff I'm not too proud of. I was young. I didn't love, and I didn't have to answer to anybody. Huh. And now, I host fundraiser car washes and take the kids to soccer practice on the weekends. Sorry, I don't, I don't mean to get heavy here. It's okay. Seems like you spend a lot of time taking care of others, but not enough time taking care of yourself. If you need time to talk about it, I'm here for you. Joseph stares deeply into the blender filled with ice and margarita mix. 
It's just... I think about Margaritaville a lot. Or I guess the concept of it. A place where I could strum on my sixth string while I wait for the shrimp to boil, drink margaritas all the time. Forget my worries. It's an easy life. I had Margaritaville once. But I think the closest I'm ever going to get back to it is Margarita's Zone. A short and occasional reprieve from daily life. Is that such a bad thing? It's pretty nice. Uh, it doesn't last forever. That's the rub. When you're in Margarita Zone, it's not like your problems have really gone away. You're just choosing to ignore them. Uh, Maybe you're looking at it the wrong way. Maybe Margarita Zone is actually better than Margaritaville because Margaritaville itself is an impossible ideal. Remember what Spin Master Quinn said? Sometimes you have to play the sad tunes to appreciate the bangers. If stepping on a pop-top is your biggest concern, how could you possibly appreciate the boiling shrimp? Oh. Huh. The Margarita Zone isn't landlocked to this office. I think it's about finding the little pieces of Margarita Zone throughout your day and taking joy in those moments. Huh. That's awfully optimistic of you. It doesn't have to be anything big. For me, I think it's being able to quietly do word jumbles or drink some strong coffee in the morning. See my daughter smile, or smile at Joseph. Spend some quality time with a good friend. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. I can feel myself leaning closer to Joseph. Is it just me, or is he leaning closer, too? <gasps> oh, my God. Try Princess Irish. I love you so much. Your mom, thank you for the super. Joseph tenses up. He downs the rest of his margarita and hops up out of his chair. It's getting late. We should head back. Sure. Joseph and I make sure the dance wraps up without incident before he takes me back to the cul-de-sac. The real journey is the margarita zones we made along the way. Damn straight. Hop out of Joseph's car before he pulls into his own driveway. Oh. Thanks again for the help. Thanks again for margarita zone. Oh. Maybe we'll go back there one day. If we do, it'll be my own damn uh. fault. Joseph chuckles and drives away. Uh. I walk into my living room to find Amanda curled up under a blanket, groaning on the couch. Hey, Panda. Feeling okay? <sighs> Dad, I have a tummy ache. Eat too much youth group food? Uh. I drank too deeply from the well of life, and now I pay the price. Uh. And by well of life, I mean that big, lukewarm punch bowl of seltzer, juice, and sherbet. Amanda slices, slides to the floor with an elongated groan. Ah! Huh. <clears throat> Need anything, kiddo? A time machine that goes back approximately two hours in the past so I can warn myself of the folly of excess. I'll pour you a glass of water. Love you, Pops. How'd the dance go? Oh, I crushed it. Got the kids on the dance floor at the expense of my dignity. Fair trade. Also, everything hurts. I'll see you in the morning, kiddo. Night, Dad. Yay. Kendra, thank you very much for the super and Toya as well. What are we gonna get? What are we gonna get? What are we gonna get, Faris? Come on, give me that S rank. Bada bing! I've never had that much fun in my life. This poor that was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah, we got that double S rank. My daddy points are off the scale! It's been a long day. And yet I'm not quite ready to sleep. Usually when I feel this way, I, main, I mainline investigative TV until I pass out, but tonight I feel like it would just make me antsy. I decide to take a relaxing stroll. After a bit of wandering, I find myself wandering, passing by Jim and Kim's. Being of legal drinking age and sound judgment, I decide to stop in. Typically, I try to limit my consumption of alcohol to set a positive example for Amanda, but I also feel a responsibility to play a role as a social agent in our community, and a watering hole such as Jim and Kim's is the perfect place to do it. I also desperately need a beer. Jim and Kim's is lively tonight. The patrons are milling about, and even Neil seems to have been having a good time. Coming here was a good idea. As I reach to collect my beer, I see Mary at the end of the bar. She's not semi-ironically throwing herself all over anyone. In fact, she's alone. She looks so sad. A pang of guilt shoots through me. Does she know? Does she know? Is this because of me? My home wrecker?
do a bit of space work pretending not to notice Mary and instead focus on a quippy man cave slogan on the wall. Can't tell if Mary completely buys it, but I think my performance is a job well done. I managed to keep my eyes glued to the game despite the guilt sweat accumulating under my collar. Just when the coast seems clear, I feel an ominous tap on my shoulder. You. Uh, hey. Having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? Uh, he's a great... I'm so glad. I'm happy for you two. Mary, I'm not... I'd never accuse you of anything uncouth, Fox. You're just having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband. A supportive friendship. You're a good friend, aren't you? My stummy. Unlike some other people in his life. So you're an expert on my marriage now. Whoop. Better save. Doesn't the expert see you two are miserable? Yeah. Then what does that make you? We were miserable a long time before you started poking into our business, buddy boy. Don't come around thinking you're some kind of paragon of empathy just because you got involved when you weren't welcome. Mary takes a long sip of her drink. This is a mistake. You know, you're really not his type. I'm surprised. Mary pays her, t Mary pays her tab and strides right out of Jim and Kim's without looking back. Wonder if I should try that again. Wonder if I should try that again. There were no, like, ups or downs to that. Damien and Hugo. Okay, interesting. Walk Mary home. Walk Mary home. See, we did fuck it up. We did fuck it up. Let's try that again. We did fuck it up. My bada bang. All right, so we'll let her approach us. Bada bing. Hey, having fun with your new best friend. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm just a friend. That's funny. Joseph usually likes his friends to at least have a spine. Can't all be as blunt as you are, Mary. See, so you're an expert on my marriage now. Alright. I'm sorry? I can tell that you're having a rough time, won't you? No, that doesn't have to be like this. I don't want any hard feelings between us, Mary. She pauses. Ah, uh, uh, it's all messed up. I'm sorry. Uh. I'm sorry for us both. Damn, 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 damn. Okay, 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 we'll try again. Welcome. Welcome. You've got dads. Okay, let's try again. Um. Uh, so we saved that one. I think we should just try again from the beginning, right? Let's try and say hi. A seat taken? Take a seat anyways. She finally notices me. You. Okay, this is maybe not the best idea. Hey. Having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? Uh, he's a great... I'm so glad. I'm happy for you two. Mary, I'm not... I'd never accuse you of anything uncouth, Fox. You're just having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband. Supportive friendship. You're a good friend, aren't you? Sure. It's funny. Joseph usually likes his friends to at least have a spine. Hey. Not everyone likes to yell at their spouse's friends for no reason. So you're an expert on my marriage now. I'm just trying to be there for my friend, okay? Oh, you're there for him. I see how you look at him. I bet you're there for him a lot. This is a mistake. You know, you're really not his type. Fuck! What's the... What's the right answer? Welcome. What's the right answer? I feel like I've done everything. I feel like I've done everything. I've already approached her first. I've already- I've done all three of these. Let's try again from the very beginning. Hmm. She's always gonna be- I'm getting the feeling that this is an unwinnable scenario. It's the fact that it says walk Mary home, right? It makes me feel like this is, you know, what- it wouldn't be called walk Mary home, it would be called like meeting Mary at the bar or something or like an argument with Mary. Why is it called walk Mary home? There must be some way of making it work Let's try to keep watching the game Just a friend I'm there when he needs me So you're an expert on my marriage now Oh, you're there for him. I see how you look at him Damn in other routes, you can walk her home. Right, I see. But so you meet her in the bar in other routes, but not 
but not when you're dating Joseph. I see. Okay. These two. Hey, are you up to anything tonight? Hugo and I were planning to go to the art walk downtown, and were wondering if you would care to accompany us. I would normally write a letter longhand, but I've run out of distressed parchment paper. Huh. Why can I see Damien Hugo's chat? Am I a hacker? I don't even have a hacker alias. The feds are going to bust down my door any minute now. I've got to destroy this computer. Vox, this is a group chat. Oh, thank God. Do either of you guys know how to destroy a computer? You can run Derek's boot and nuke from a startup flash drive. But once you've done that, it's best to physically destroy the platters altogether. <laughs> um, the Victorians were very well versed in information security. <laughs> Sammy, thank you very much for the super. Vox, do you want to go and see some art or not? Art is good. Let's go see that art. See that art. Damien and Hugo invited me to the monthly art walk in downtown Maple Bay. I've never really been to one of these before, so I'm not quite sure what I'm in for. I think I'm here a bit early. I don't see Damien or Hugo around anywhere, and I feel just a little uncomfortable standing among all these fancy art people. Vox? Turn around. It's Joseph! Joseph, what are you doing here? Joseph scoffs at me. What am I doing here? How could you ask me that? I'm obviously a huge art... Uh, appreciate... The appreciator, appreciatist. Oh. <laughs> okay, fine. Damien invited me to this art walk thing. Guess I'm guessing he invited you too? Yep. Admittedly, a little out of my depth here. Thank God. Thought I was going to be the odd one out. You allowed to say that? Say what? You know. Thank God. Oh. Yep. I actually get double points when I say it since I'm a minister. Mm. The points get you into heaven. That's how it works. Anyway, where are the guys? I look and spot Hugo and Damien who seem to have just arrived at the gallery. Good eve, good eve, good eve. Oh. Evening, friends. Oh. Who's ready for some art? Art is dead and nothing is real. I have no idea what I'm in for. Ah, same. All you have to know is that you're ever, if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, there's generally always a table that has free wine and cheese. I like art now. I've got the table in my sights. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go help myself to some tiny wines. Get cheese and tiny wine with Joseph. I think I need to cheese up before I delve into art appreciation. Good idea. Appreciating art does burn a lot of calories. Gotta carb up on those crackers. Joseph and I sidle up to the cart says, blah, blah, to the snack table. There's a pretty nice spread of little plastic cups of white wine, some crackers, grapes, and cheese. Oh. This is more my speed. We eat a couple of cheese cubes in silence. These are really good. Ooh. Yeah, I don't eat dinner. I think I could probably just fill up on snacks if I'm sneaky about it. I already ate dinner, but I will always have room for cheese. I'm going in for more crackers. Cover me. I shield Joseph from the small crowd of mild-mannered art people milling around the room. I don't think anyone's paying attention. I should probably get back to Damien and Hugo. Right, let me just fill this cup with cheese first for the road. Road cheese? Best kind. <laughs> we leave the first gallery and walk a few minutes before we reach another one. This gallery is a bit more crowded. Huge paintings of... I'm not even sure hang on the walls. Oh... Oh, jeez. What am I looking at here? Oh. This is abstract art. I think the more important question is, what does this art mean to you? I stare at the painting, concentrating as hard as I can on its meaning. Metaphor for the human condition. Reminds me of my childhood. It represents strife. It's a butt. <laughs> I mean, I reckon I could do this in real life. I reckon I could do this in real life, but I can't. I don't know which painting we're talking about. Let's assume it's this one. Reminds me of my childhood. Warmth. And the branches branching off into limitless possibilities that are available to you when you're a child. And yet, because of the faded colors, we do not know which path we are taking at any given time. The gestures, the color, remind me of my childhood, of my parents. Intriguing, you discover something so personal in an image so nonspecific, Mr. Akuma. May I ask you to stay to say a little more? Just kidding, it's a butt. Certainly. These vivid, simple forms communicate a solemnity that is betrayed by the raw expressiveness of the brushwork, which, in a way, speaks to the essential nature of human experience. The scars left by the passage of time and the turmoil of contemporary life are both contextualized and deepened by the rose-colored echoes of pre edible consciousness. Slow down there, Vox. Do us a favor and keep it simple. It's a butt. Um, Everyone stares at the painting. Yeah, that's definitely a butt. I... Oh. Hmm. While a valid assessment, I can't help feeling your initial judgment may be closer to the artist's intentions. 
Maybe you're understanding how much the artists like butts. <laughs> you are a servant of the Lord. We're all God's creatures, even butts. Hmm? Comparing this piece to the artist's body of work, I'm sure this represents the, uh, the sense of isolation he feels creating traditional abstract artwork in a field that's rapidly moving towards, digi towards digitization. Wow, how do you figure that? That's what it says on the placard. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Let's look at a few more of these. We walk around the gallery, sampling some more of the artist's work. I almost hate to say it, but abstract art is kind of growing on me. It's interesting that the artist chooses not to let their work be defined by, what's the word, realism? Realism. As we're looking at one of the paintings, a patron scoffs loudly. <laughs> I could do that. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? What? Hugo, not here. Mm -hmm. Am I about to fall in love with Hugo? No, come back here! The patron walks away, not noticing Hugo fuming right next to him. You, you could, you, you say you could do that, but you didn't! You don't seem to have the intellectual depth or the artistic skill to execute a piece even a fraction as impressive as this one. Art is the truest expression of the self, and it seems like yourself is, is bad. So your art would be bad. Hugo's insult game isn't the best, but there's no denying his passion. Damien is holding him back at this point. Friend, friend, he's not worth it. Hugo manages to cool down. He smooths his jacket. I'm sorry. I just love art very much. We know, buddy. Pat Hugo on the show. I might actually, if I want to keep playing after Joseph, I might actually go for Hugo next. Everything he said so far feels like I would genuinely learn a lot from, like, communicating with him, you know? Thank you, Harumi and Aniko, for the gifted. Thank you so much. You know what it is, mood? Is it cheese? No. It's wine and cheese. Co-signed. The four of us head over to the wine and cheese table, which thankfully is grounded in realism and is actual wine and cheese. Oh. We got one last stop on the tour. You're not feeling up for it? We're gonna be any weirder than this art? It is absolutely weirder than this art. Let's do it. The in-game voice for Damien sounds so much weirder. Sounds so much like more different than my own voice. It keeps throwing me off. I'm like, who the fuck is making that sound? Oh, right. I've just given him a silly voice. Damien, Hugo, Joseph, and I walk over to a performance in the street. Several masked performers in leotards uh, undulate wildly on the ground, screaming both at each other and us. <laughs> so, quick question. Shoot. What is happening? I second this question. Performance art. What does it mean? Again, I pose the very same question to you, Mr. Akuma. Fear of existence. The very humanity of being human. They really let bots? Fear of existence, I feel like, makes sense. If you're writhing and screaming on the ground, it's like you're being assaulted from all sides, and so, you know, you resent being born, I guess, would be my takeaway. What do you think they're trying to say? Yeah. I believe it's less about what they're saying and more about why they're saying it. I believe there's something special about performance art. In almost every other form of art, music, painting, photography, the artist uses their medium as a conduit for their emotions. Oh. With performance art... The medium is the artist. It's the purest expression of raw human emotion. It's art as catharsis. Uh, That's beautiful, Damien. Yeah, no. I had not thought of it that way. That's a very interesting way of looking at it. So what you're saying is, if I start making really loud fart noises right now, it's art, as long as I, like, really mean it. Damien fixes him with a hard stare. It's called a hard stare. My Aunt Lucy told me to do it when people when people have forgotten their manners. I was going to start making fart noises, but based on the look on your face, that joke isn't going to play too well with this crowd. Mm. Ah. Wise. Ah. We watch the rest of the performance as earnestly as we can and clap politely after the dancers scream their way off stage. <laughs> I think I'm all arted out. Agreed. We all decide to walk home together. Oh. We make our way back to the cul-de-sac, tiny wine and cheese sloshing around in my stomach. I think what I've learned tonight, and not just what I've learned about art, which was nice and extremely informative, but what I've learned tonight is that when you put a bunch of tiny wine and cheese together, it eventually becomes regular wine and regular cheese, followed by too much wine and too much cheese. <laughs> the tiny cheese lulled me into a false sense of security. I felt safe with the tiny cheese. Wax wings too close to the sun. Oh. Cheese wings. Those are melt in the sun, too. I feel like it's more appropriate imagery. Oh. Plus, it'll be delicious. A nice, a nice Emmental, po possibly. <laughs> Emmental, right. 
Hey, you guys are painters. What would you paint? I actually dabble in oils. I mostly paint landscapes. I'm not very good, but it's a nice way to pass the time. Oh. I think I would focus on personal portraits of people in unique professions, like, for example, luchadors. Oh. I think I'd paint boats, seascapes, maybe some lighthouses. Mostly boats. Really? Ah. Yeah. I'm surprised you're choosing boats in favor of a long history of religious imagery and artwork. Oh. What? Boats are cool. Hmm. What about you, Vox? Food artistry, landscapes, tasteful nudes of the artist. Interesting. Tasteful nudes of mine. That's a good one. Oh. Art is a money-making business. I know what sells. We finally get to the cul-de-sac. All right, boys. Good art. Good art. Agreed. <laughs> See you guys around? Whether you want to or not, we're all neighbors after all. I head inside to deal with my inevitable cheese over. <laughs> that was really nice. I really enjoyed that. I feel like the side mission with like the with like Craig and the um and the girls was like, you know, it's kind of, it was kind of good. It was, you know, is is that that one was my favorite. It's like kind of side quest, I guess, so far. It was really really fun. Okay, it's time. We've saved. Final date with Joseph. Let's see what happens. I really want to see Joseph again, but after that weird encounter with Mary, I don't know. He's my friend, right? I should be able to hang out with him and it not be weird, right? Right? The computer pings as a message flies into my inbox. It's Joseph. Hey, Vox, we should hang out. Like, actually hang out. No manual labor, no impromptu therapy sessions with sad DJs, no kids. Just you and me in the open ocean. Wait, how are we going to get on the open ocean? How do we get on the open ocean, you might ask? Good question. Whoa, prescient. If you're interested, I'll meet you down by the, by the marina, and you can check out the goods, if you know what I mean. I mean my yacht. Let me know. Joseph owns a yacht? Um, Joseph owns a yacht? I'm as surprised as you are. Oh. You've been holding out on me. Your only daughter. We love. What, do you think that having me as a father would somehow afford you the fringe benefit of getting to go on a yacht? What else did it get me? Healthy upbringing, sport environment, literally paying for your college. Not a dog, that's for sure. <laughs> All of these are funny. Oh. Your words cut deep, Pops. Real deep. Dad, if there's one thing in the world that's better than a dog, it's a yacht dog. You and your yacht dog, that's a bond forged through the trials at sea. Relax, kiddo. Joseph's inviting me onto his yacht. It's going to be a yacht of fun. Oh. I'm glad you're excited, but that doesn't mean you get to start throwing out puns. Why yacht, Amanda? Well, I gotta go get ready. To go on my friend's yacht. I start to walk away, but Amanda stops me. Hey, in all seriousness, I hope you have fun. But make good choices, okay? Uh, Dad! Don't stay out too late, or you can't go to Jennifer Longforth's birthday party this weekend. She promised me she would. Pr she promised me she would propose to me, but ended up going with Logan Crutchfield. I'm not going anywhere near that party. Good bit, Dad. Good bit. <laughs> I respond back to Joseph, letting him know I'll be there. Make good choices, eh? Hmm. A quaint marina complete with local mom and pop shops and a small diner framed the bay. I've gone for a few walks by the bayside to stare enviously at all the nice boats before. Joseph should, Joseph should be around here somewhere. Gosh, this is fancy. I feel a little, I feel a little out of place. Um. Hey, Vox. Joseph, w where are you? Up here. I look up. Joseph waves to me from atop a huge yacht. I've never been on a yacht before. You never forget you first. I glance at the name on the side of the boat. The St. Peter, huh? Inherited this thing from my pops. Real fire and brimstone type. Loved yachts. So what's the plan, Captain? I figured since last time we went a bit sideways, we could cast our lot out on the open sea, wrestle with Neptune, set sail on the seas of adventure. You're kind of a goofball when you're not wrangling your kids, you know that? Joseph smiles and winks from his perch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Joseph hops down and extends a hand to me, helping me up onto the yacht. I'm thrown off by how soft his hands are. Is he moisturize or what? Box, stop thinking about his hands! Pure thoughts. You're gonna be on a boat, alone, with Joseph on the open ocean. It's a yacht. He's married. It's fine. This is fine. Ooh. -hoo. 
After undoing the mooring and climbing into his captain's seat, Joseph slowly takes the boat out, ringing the big steel bell with extra emphasis, even though nobody else seems to be around. Shoving off, boat launching, man and boat launching as one. The St. Peter navigates out of the marina and into open water, with Joseph doing the occasional steering flourish as the boat bobs along with the waves. He seems a lot more relaxed out here. Joseph is definitely in his element. This is the part where we wrestle Neptune, so please remove your shirt and roll in some talcum powder. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Luckily, I brought my Neptuning fork. Joseph stifles a laugh. What if there was a better option? What if there was a better option? What if there was a better option? I always want to look for the eggplant option. I didn't bring any talcum powder. I can usually carry some on me, but I left my pocket-sized bottle on my nightstand. I chafe easily. Right. Fuck. Fuck. That was a terrible idea. That was a terrible idea. Terrible idea. Go again. I'd be useless on a real date. Dramatically pull off- Oh, cracker bells! <laughs> I dramatically pull off my shirt. My dad bod illuminated in the reflection of Maple Bay's rippling water. I am strong. Hell yeah. Not bad. Might have to tag team Neptune together. I'm suddenly worried that I haven't applied enough- a strong enough SPF sunscreen and might get a sunburn. I put my shirt back on. For a while, we watch as the trees and waves pass us by. Where are we going? A little further out. It's a lot quieter once we get out on open water. Plus, we can see whales. Whales are cool. I don't trust whales. Nothing should be that big. No, it didn't. Joseph maneuvers the boat past some boys. He sighs. Mm. Wish I could get out more often. You know. He's maneuvering past the boys when really he should be fucking the boys. You know what I'm saying? Family. Wife. Saving souls. Yeah. So many souls. I could barely hold them all. I watch Joseph work the boat. Despite his age, he doesn't look like he's slowed down at all. And from here... I can see how toned his muscles are. Impure thoughts. Joseph and I boat in silence as the bay gets smaller and smaller behind us. I decide to take a peek over the edge of the ship. The wake this thing kicks off is insane. I wonder if Joseph would ever let me water ski off his yacht. Hey, dolphins! Joseph, there are dolphins! So you're scared of whales but not dolphins? Well, there's an unspoken truce between man and dolphin. I'd be more comfortable riding a dolphin into battle. <laughs> dolphins are way more dangerous. They sometimes drown their babies for fun, you know. Can I trust nothing on the open ocean? I like to think that I'm pretty cool. All right, Joseph, it's you and me versus the entirety of marine life. I yell out to the ocean. You're all spineless invertebrates. I had my lobster lunch last week and I can't wait to eat more of you. Hang on, these are all good. My life goal is to punch as many fish as I can before I die. I had lobster last week, and I can't wait to eat more of you! <laughs> you tell him, Vox. And here we are. Vox, welcome to the ocean. Look out into the vast expanse of blueness. Yep. That's the ocean. I'm suddenly struck with an overwhelming sense of claustrophobia, despite being in a wide open space. I am on a boat. With a handsome man. A handsome married man. And there are whales beneath us. Nothing should be that big. It's a little dancing, isn't it? You trust the whales? Well, there are more dangerous things in the ocean than whales, right? Like tuna. The tuna is an apex predator. What about sharks? Sharks are tight. It's the tuna you gotta watch out for. And the whales? Hey, wanna look out wistfully over the sea with me? Joseph and I head to the bow of the ship to do some quiet contemplation. You know, I... Shh. Quiet contemplation. I'm alone with my thoughts. Cool. Nice. I look out to the sea for a bit and head over to Joseph. He looks so commanding as he surveys the ocean. It feels like he really is at home on the water. What Mary said to me at the bar, I can't stop thinking about it. Is she right? But she's terrible to him. She's, he's unhappy. He deserves better. I don't know what to think about this, but I just feel so drawn to Joseph. I should say something. So, um, about Mary. Joseph continues to stare off into the distance. It's, um, huh? well, if you really want to know. Oh Kirk, Douglas. <laughs> oh, Kirk Douglas! Suddenly I hear a sputter coming from the engine room. Joseph runs over to the boat's controls and taps on some dials. Guess we can talk about Mary later. Oh, okay, so yeah. we might have a small problem. What small problem? We are out of gas. 
The whales are gonna get us. The whales siphoned our gas! It's okay. I can just call one of my boat buddies to come tow us back in. Joseph pulls out his phone. <laughs> just kidding, I can't do that because there's no service out here. I check my phone. I don't have service either. Should we just submit ourselves to the whales? Well, I do have an old radio in the office, but it's broken. You handy with tools? I am a dad. If the radio is anything like frantically putting together a bike on Christmas Eve, it should be no problem. <laughs> Let's take a look at it and see what we can figure out. Joseph directs me toward the radio and showcases its insides. Hmm. I don't know how radios work. I think there's just some frayed wires in here. If we can reattach them, we should have a working radio in no time. We stare into the interior of the radio. Not entirely sure what I'm looking at. I don't think Joseph knows either. Uh, you know what? Let's just throw some stuff around in here and see what works. Is there going to be a minigame? Oh, radio repair minigame! MacGyver that radio! There's a rubber duck. Okay. Uh, all right. Got a black wire. Um... Okay, uh, that's a condom. Um, as a pencil. Fuck! I was trying to grab the- trying to grab the coconut. Get out of here. Get out of here. Rub duck. Get out, get out of here. As a- it's, I, oh shit. Okay. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Let's connect the wires. Wires first. Uh, can we- uh, Okay. Okay, good. Um, just need to connect something to something else. Nope. Down there. Where? Where? Eh. There. But. Eh. Yes. Yes. No. Um. Can we use the gum like thermal paste? USB charging cable. Boom. Uh. Gum. Paperclip. Gum. Hang on. This goes here. Paperclip goes out here. Hang on. Gum. Thermal paste. That's a, that's that's a, that's a CPU. I know I know that when I see it. Pick up the goddamn gum! I guess I can't pick up the goddamn gum. I have no idea what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing here. Shit. Um, paperclip. Eh. Perfect. Just, just, just keep making it zap. Keep making it do things. Power. Yeah! All right, we got it! Yay! I... Yeah! All right! We got it! Paperclip. It was all about the paperclip. And it's the gum. The gum, right? You know, any of you building a PC, thermal paste goes near the CPU. Not on it, okay? Processor. Whatever. I don't know. Hey, it works, kind of. Got it, baby. The radio springs to life. Oh, we did it. Joseph speaks into the receiver. Hello. I've got to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. Oh, what the fuck? Oh my god, that sounds terrible. Effects. Hang on. Wait a minute. 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 Uh, I'm gonna read this one. There you go. He tries a few other channels. Nobody responds. Hmm. Might be a little far out. I don't think there's anyone in range. How big's the range? <laughs> well, this radio came with the boat my dad bought it in the 60s, so... Not great. That's reassuring. Now what? There's worse places to be stuck on than a yacht. Wine? Wine! Keep a couple emergency bottles below deck. I keep a couple emergency bottles below deck. Wanna go grab some while I fiddle with this radio some more? Let's see, wine, wine, it's gotta be around here somewhere. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class. Wood panels on everything, leather couches, it's like an old playboy photo shoot in here. There are some clothes strewn on the floor by the bed. Socks, slacks, yep, pink polo shirt. Well, I guess I know if Joseph prefers boxes or briefs. Place seems a little lived in. Hmm. Hmm. For an old yacht. Oh wait, what? I already, already did that. Side table. Hey, wine glasses. Must be hot on the trail. But no wine. Grab two glasses and get back to searching. 
Oh, a California king. Swanky. It's unmade and a little messy. There's literally a bottle of wine right there. For an old yacht. Examine lounge. Examine shelf. Take a look at everything on the shelf. There's a few photos on the wall here. Looks like a picture from Joseph and Mary's wedding day. Nice grandpa glasses. Real, real looking real slick there, Joe. Another picture of Mary and Joseph on this very yacht. Quality 90s fashion right here. Mary still has her patented stink face, but at least Joseph seems happy on the water. Hey, it's all the dads! Looks like it's from a couple years ago. The gang's all here. Brian, Matt, Hugo, Craig, Damien, Robert. Wow, Robert's actually smiling and wearing a sweater. Lord, why did you put that image in my head? Oh! I want to mother him. Oh, I want to mother him, but tell him he's a good little boy. That's how- that's- I know that sweater. And there's one guy on the end I don't recognize. Hugo's ex, maybe? And hey, here's Joseph's go-karting with the kids. That's fun. Take a look at everything on the shelf. Looks like a bunch of different Bibles, on brand. A couple old vet magazines. I guess those must be Mary's. Wait a minute. Is this... Well, well... Now the hot body shoe is on the other hot body foot. They take a look at everything else on the shelf. Examine the knickknacks. If there's one thing Joseph does right, it's the odd stuff he puts on his shelves. Take a moment to closely examine what I think is an old submarine clock. Ah, and there's the crosses again. Boy knows his crosses. Really cool design, too. I take a look at everything on the shelf. It's a sturdy cabinet. A little dusty, but I bet there are some treasures in here. Look, you can tell a lot about a man by how seriously he takes his fire safety. Nice, Joseph. Nice. Well, this is a solution to a different problem. Maybe if we're stranded out here for days and run out of electricity, we'll need these. But the chief concern right now is wine intake. It's a sturdy cabinet. A little dusty, but I bet there are some treasures in here. Puppy, thank you very much for the super. Ah, thank you very much. I'm glad you're having a good day. Hey, it's wine! A whole drawer full of wine. It's a yacht club miracle. Toilet Rouge, huh? Come to daddy. Finally, time to get back up to Joseph. It's a sturdy cabinet. A little dusty, but I bet there's some tr- Alright, folks, in the rest of the room. Do I bring in the lounge? Okay, we're good. I bring the wine and glasses up to the deck to find Joseph still hunched over the radio. Oh. Box, wine. Good to see the two of you. Just in time for the sunset. I didn't take you for a drinker. Eh? Wink. Haven't you heard? I'm a cool minister. How cool? Mm. I can land half my kickflips. What is that, like four? Hey. Well, I'm on a good day. Pour me. Power pour! <laughs> Whoa, okay, time to party. We clink our glasses and drink up. Mm. This wine's not bad. There's a hint of... Am I tasting grapes? <laughs> you have a discerning palate. It might be grapes. Joseph and I lounge on the deck with our yacht wine, taking in the ocean air. The sun starts to dip below the horizon. We could be stranded out here forever. Can't think of anyone else I'd want to be stranded with. Just you, me, all those whales, so many whales. You're killing the vibe. Revive the vibe, Fox. Generally, it takes three days in a gigantic stone door rolled in front of a tomb. But I think we can save it. Uh, bum, bum. You, though, you like your mysteries hot-bodied. Then we'll have a whale of a time. What's it like owning a yacht? You like your mysteries hot button. Let's, 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 let's go for the kill. Lords of Arabia. Oh, Lords of Mariah. Oh. It's a really rewarding series, Fox. Uh-huh. Yeah. Look, you have fun with your word jumbles. I'll enjoy the well-crafted excellence of a highly regarded serial of sex books. <laughs> detective novels. Sexy detective books featuring a hard-boiled gumshoe who can't be held down by the law or by love or by the mystery of the Spanish lover. <laughs> You read them too. The author really had a stride around book 17. <laughs> this view though. I mean, there's something a lot prettier in front of me. Sweet, full-bodied. God. <laughs> Joseph, I, this wine, so good. God damn! I go to take another sip of wine, but I stop myself! Gah! Is wine an acceptable beverage in Margarita's own? Oh. That it is, Fox. 
All beverages of leisure are welcome in the Margarita Zone. The zone is what we wanted, right? No responsibilities, no worries. Other than possibly dying out here. And the whales. Oh. Yeah. I'd say we're in the zone. Joseph and I clink our wine glasses again. To the Margarita Zone. Yeah. Wasted away again. If you have any salt shakers, we can arrange them into a pentagram to summon Jimmy Buffett. He can save us. Hmm. As a youth minister, I make packs with neither the devil nor island jammers. If we're to get off this boat, it'll be by the grace of God. Or Steely Dan. Ha! Huh. Amen. Our laughter dies down. We're both silent for a moment, looking into, into each other's eyes. Joseph leans in closer. And I can feel myself doing the same. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. I can't help but feel like doing this will only end up hurting someone else. His face is real close to my face. Yeah. Box, I have to tell you something. Mm. Mary and I are done. I pull back. I think about the clothes strewn around the lounge, the undone bed. Are you living on this boat? <laughs> I... I didn't want to mention it, but... He sighs, strolling back to the controls of the boat. I lean on the console next to him. Mm. We had a very long talk. It's unsalvageable. I'm staying here till everything's sorted out. Oh, I'm so sorry. If there's anything I can do, oh. I'm fine. I'm fine, actually. Uh. It was a long time coming. <laughs> For the first time in a long time, I'm seeing a path to happiness. And now I can focus on myself and stop trying to deny the things that make me happy. Uh. I need someone who will be there. Someone kind and honest. And you deserve that, Joseph. You really do. Anyway, I've been having this crazy feeling there's someone who I could get in the habit of having around. Someone very close to here. Is it whales? Oh. I mean you. Oh. Hmm. I was trying to be subtle. I think I'm picking up what Joseph's putting down. I lean forward, closing the gap between us when... Joseph grabs the receiver. Come in, come in, is anyone there? Fuck! Uh, no, over. Hmm. We're stranded out on open waters. We've been out here for hours. Please send help, over. But wait, are you guys gonna kiss? I mean, what are your coordinates? Over! Oh. Box, you been leaning on the talk button this whole time?! <laughs> <laughs> I look down. Oh, oh, I definitely have been leaning on the talk button. Betrayed by my own butt yet again. No comment. I didn't lean on it, you leaned on it! Neither of you were leaning it. Neither of you were leaning on the talk button. We didn't hear anything. Over. Hey, were you listening to us? Sir, we here at the Coast Guard are professionals. We were not doing that. But as professionals, it seems like you deserve happiness. And we think it's closer than you think. Uh, over. Oh. How soon could you guys be here to give us a tow? Over. We'll, uh, pick you up in the morning. Sounds like you two have some stuff to hash out. Over and out. Lords of Arabia. Wait! Yeah. Silence. Nobody returns our radio calls. Oh. Uh, I think they left. I got my keys in my pocket. Get out of here. We stare at each other for a second. Well, Joseph carefully places the receiver on the table, making sure the talk button is impressed in. Well, okay. Hey. Joseph grabs me by the shirt and pulls me into a kiss. His lips are soft and sweet from the wine, and his skin is still warm from the sun. I reach for his belt and pull him even closer, running my free hand under his shirt and up his side. He pushes me against the boat's console, kissing down my neck. Come on. His hands drip to my thighs and he effortlessly picks me up! Oh my goodness! Wow. Joseph carries me below deck. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't fantasized about this, but I didn't think he'd be so aggressive. I've waited, I've wanted this for so long. He throws me onto the bed. I let out a little yelp. <laughs> Lots of time to kill Box. We better get started. Oh my god! Oh man. I might have overdone it on the wine last night. Just a few more minutes of sleep and we'll do just fine. Wait. 
I opened my eyes to find Joseph's face a few inches from mine, an arm slung around my waist. He's sleeping peacefully. His hair is must and his lips still a little red. <laughs> we got him! We got him! We stuck the landing! I think this is what I was talking about when we were discussing Margarita Zone. Finding little, perfect moments of joy, like the way light falls across Joseph's face, or how he's still holding me tight even in his sleep. I tempted to curl up closer to him and keep sleeping, but I know the Coast Guard will probably be here soon. I like to be wearing clothes when that happens. I nudge Joseph. It takes a couple of shakes before he blearily opens his eyes. When he notices me hovering over him, he breaks into a huge grin. We should get dressed. Joseph pulls me in for a kiss. We have to. Another kiss. Stop trying to tempt me. Fine, fine. Ugh. The Coast Guard eventually shows up and tows us back to the bay. They, thankfully, keep their comments to themselves. Joseph... And... Joseph and I step off the yacht and he walks me back to my car. I had a great time. Me too. No thanks to the whales. Nice. Shh, shh. You're on land now. They can't hurt you here. Take care, Joseph. You too. He gives me one last kiss on the lips before he turns around and walks back to his boat. Let's fucking go! Couldn't have imagined it going any better. Couldn't have imagined going any better if I tried. Lily, thank you very much for the super. We have gotten our wine and our cake by the ocean, and it's a happy ending for everyone. But what's gonna happen next? We're gonna meet Mary at the party, of course. We'll see what happens. Well, I've been gone an entire day. Hopefully Amanda's all right. Amanda, I'm- Dad! She runs up and hugs me. I was genuinely concerned about your well-being, but upon closer inspection, you seem to be okay. What happened? The yacht ran out of gas and we got stuck, but it was okay because I was on a yacht. Aren't you scared? Your father feels no fear. Were you able to take care of yourself for the night? Yeah, I just did a ton of drugs, vandalized a few cars, and embezzled some funds from my school. All in all, pretty low-key night. Where'd you learn that from? I learned it from you, Dad. I learned it by watching you! Well, if you did, you would have funneled those funds through a legitimate cash-and-carry business, fudging the books over the course of years so you don't arouse suspicion from the feds. Rookie mistake, Panda. Glad you're back in one piece. Did you make good choices? Yeah, I think I did. But hey, I'm starving. Want to make sandwiches out of whatever we can find in the fridge? More than anything, Pops. Let's fucking go. I really enjoyed the conclusion of that arc, but I'm waiting to see what will happen. Bowling all the way up. Daddy points. Oh, my daddy points are off the fucking scale. Hey! <laughs> hey! Man, get that shit out of my face. I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, Vox, be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Something fishy? Rats. That life of crime is finally catching up to you. Tried to send him in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and funding of the US government. Okay, so this is the start of the party. Bada bing, and then we give her the present with the thing, and then we go outside, and holy shit, the dads have arrived! Told me not to make a big deal, because it's your graduation party, blah 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 mac and cheese party! We should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time! But first, mac and cheese! Oh no, Mary's here. Anything that happened between me and Joseph, I should be a good host and say hi to her. I don't wanna. Come on, Fox, you can do this. Walk up to Mary. Come on. Hey. Hey. You been good? Just peachy. I have to go over there now. That went over about as well as I could have expected it to. Fox! Ryan, you made it! I don't pass up on good Mac. Alright, so we've seen this part already. We know what he does. Blah de blah de blah de blah de blah. This isn't over. Hey bro, it's Craig. It's my brother Craig. Here he is with his children. 
Nah, having fun. They're chilling. They're hanging out. I'll let you guys figure it out. Good seeing you, Craig. Hugo comes up. Perfect cheddar to Mac ratio. You know, I'm pleased to see Amanda doing well in her green school. Amanda's going to come over now. Amanda's going to find a little bit of bo bond with her teacher a little bit before she moves on to the next stage of her life. Now that they're no longer in that weird teacher relationship. I've not seen what Robert says if you don't do anything with him. Hey. Hey. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. See you later. Hey, <laughs> hey man. Matt. Let me know when Amanda leaves. We're gonna have da 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 da. Ah, dang, da, 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 thanks for that cake. The sun is setting, and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat next to Joseph. Joseph, it's so great to see you again. Oh, great party. I should have you organize our next youth group mixer. My dance skills are ready whenever you need them. Hey. If you aren't busy this weekend, I was thinking we could maybe catch a movie or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds like it'd be fun. This feels weird. It doesn't feel like it did on the yacht. So, uh, I guess things are still friendly with Mary? Uh. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about that. Joseph sighs. We talked, and we talked for a long time. There was some yelling and some crying, but ultimately there was reconciliation. I'm sorry, Vox. I have to make this work with Mary. Oh. Yeah, oh. Hmm. I know. I shouldn't have. I didn't mean to hurt you. And I'm really sorry you got caught up in all of this. I just felt so alone lately, and I'm not even sure I'm doing the right thing here. Oh. You've come to mean so much to me. I'll never forget all those beautiful memories we shared together. But I have to thank you. In a way, this whole thing with you helped me realize that I still love my Why does it make you think that? What? Was the sex that bad? What? How dare you? Ah. <sighs> Help me realize I still love my wife. What? So is that not good enough for you? Oh, that's great. I know this probably isn't what you wanted to hear. I'm sorry if you were hoping for something different. This is where my life is, and I need to do right by my family. But hey, he squeezes my hand. We'll always have margaritas on. Joseph stands up. Take care, Fox. You too, Joseph. Joseph walks off. I, man, did I do something wrong? Was there another way this could have ended if I had done things differently? I walk over to the half-melted remnants of the ice cream cake and shove a forkful into my mouth. The ice cream cake is my new boyfriend. The last guests begin to make their way out of the party. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Okay, so now we've got the nice little ending. Don't cry. Swear to God, if you cry again, blah de blah de blah de blah de blah God fucking damn it! I guess it makes sense. He ha He's a dad... You know, it wouldn't, like, long term, it'd be very weird and awkward for them. I get it, I get it, I get it, but still, it just, ugh, it irks me. I feel like it was a true, like, sort of, you know, parents split up all the time, you know. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's like the way he was raised, definitely, you know. The, the cross, the sign of the cross looms heavy over a man like that. God damn. I'm used to making stuff to break. Damn. Okay, anyone who knows this game, when he, when I was like, is there a way that things could have gone differently? Is there a way it could have gone differently? Could I have done something to change it? Probably not, I imagine. There is a way. There is. I could get more context. Wait, how do I do that? The other way is the bad ending. Interesting. There's a different way with him. Oh. Okay, I want to know what it is. I have to know. Oh. This, so... I guess it makes sense that this is the good ending. Because... Yes, if he's a... Yeah, like, parents separate all the time. 
stuff like that happens. And he it's not like I guess the problem is that it would be painful for Mary, you know, even if she did you know, she wasn't like finding happiness in those other guys. She was trying to drown her sorrow, you know. I don't know why you didn't get this, but you're supposed to get a scene with Robert warning you about Joseph before the third date. If you put things together, you found on the yacht and Robert best friends with me. Oh. So what do... So... So... Ah! Supposed to get a scene with Robert warning you about Joseph before the third date. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, him him having had affairs with other men definitely makes a lot of sense, considering the clothes all over the place, in, in the in the in the in the room. Hmm. Okay, nobody spoil it for me. I'm gonna Google this. Dream Daddy, Joseph endings. All right. Oh my God. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just reading this. People are saying that apparently your dad book answers can affect your relationship with the characters. Holy fuck. This is gonna take forever. Okay. All right, I reckon we can I reckon we can whiz through this. I reckon we can whiz through this. Yeah, I'm reading something about a cult ending. And I have no idea how that's going to pan out. So we'll see. All right, there we go. Interesting. I would not have expected something like that, but I mean, you know, it's not, you know, you guys didn't spoil it for me. I I looked it up like Joseph endings and it's written everywhere, so you know, not exactly anyone's fault. Let me just see if I can't go and get that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to follow a guide and I'm just going to race the... <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from Margarita Zone. Wish you were here. Oh, look at that. that it's, his face looks a little odd there, I'm going to be honest. I mean, beautiful artwork. I love the colors. He, <laughs> he looks very yaoi here. You know what I'm saying? This gonna be a dream. <laughs> Giga chat, exactly. Okay. Okay. So. Continue. Uh, if we continue from... Uh, new house, meet Hugo, Robert... Da uh, okay. Dad from the... Ver uh, Robert date one. The uh, new house. Load from... If we load it from dad book, we should be fine. Okay. Welcome. You've got that. All right. So there's a guide... Bada bing, bada bing, we got these two. Okay, so that's me telling me to get ice cream. That's Robert, that's these two, and that's with Joseph. So let's go for Joseph. We have none of the dates yet, so let's just rock it through these, and I am going to study the dialogue options and make sure we get the right ones. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Oh, wait, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. No, I need, to, I need to go back, because it says there are specific dad book options that you need to put in. So, I'll try and do that. I'll try and go go all the way back. Hang on, load. All right, load. New house. All right, so I'm ripping my myself from my personality. Father and I blah da 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 da. It need you need to reset completely. Make a new bod. Man, all right, all right. Let's see what happens. I'm I'm curious about this. This is not what I expected to find. Okay. Wake up. Let's try making the goodest, most Christianist man we possibly can. Okay. Build that. Build that dad. Let's try and make the bit. Yes. So, ba ba ba. Heads. Let's. Big ch Giga Chad chin. 
Yeah, let's give him like a very normal, well-groomed hairstyle. Uh, oh, very nice, yes. And then like, like he's, he's, he's blonde, yes. Eyes, Ooh, that is perfect. For the cult ending, this is perfect. Noses, big ass Squidward nose. Uh, mouths. That okay? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want. I don't, I don't want a character like that. This is. This is horrifying. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Brows, big ass. I have big ass eyebrows. Facial hair. Oh, let's give him a beard. Yes. Yes. Glasses. Uh, the glasses kind of take away from the shock value of these eyes. Piercings. Uh, no, uh, a little earring, yeah. Clothing. Hamburger shirt, perfect. Oh, perfect. Oh, all of these are going so well. Oh, ooh, wow, okay. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, for this one, why not? Looking good, daddy. Name your dad. Name your dad. Sneed. Schmeagel. Let's go. You need a certain body. Fuck, man. Fuck. What? What the fuck? You need a specific body type. I'm sorry I wasn't reading chat while I was trying to make a funny character. Okay. Fine. Fuck. Really specific. Okay. Um. Uh. Alright. Well, I know what. Uh, um. Guide. Okay, there you go. Pro okay, there you go, there you go. So. Bada bing, bada boom, bada ba da da. Alright, build that dad. Okay, so I've got a guide here. It's just, it doesn't have like a, it doesn't have a screenshot out of it, it just has, okay. Thick tank bod. Um. This one? I, I need a picture of it, like. These are both, these are both, I mean, this one's thickest. Is it that one? Specific net art. We have to call ourselves Jimmy Buffett! Holy fuck, this is so hidden. This one. Th oh, I can see it at the top. I'm actually blind. Okay. Heads. All right, we need the oval head. All right, oval head. Balding hair. Balding. Balding. Balding hair. But, uh, are, we do look like a cult member. Holy shit. Balding hair. Wide eyes, eggy eyes, droopy eyes, big shoujo eyes, uh, wide eyes, wide eyes, they, oh my god, that's horrifying. Noses, Roman nose, uh, Roman nose, very good. Cheese mouth. Smoke mouth, full mouth, Cupid's mouth, cheese mouth, there you go, hey, yeah. Cheese mouth, wizard brows. I'm guessing those are the uh, wizard. Br yeah, wizard brows. Very nice. Um, hair color, skin color, and eye color have no impact. Okay, we'll give him some interesting hair then. Let's make him like ginger. Yeah, why not? Let's make him ginger. Perfect. Yeah, nice. All right, facial hair. No facial. Fuck, I wanted to give him a beard. No piercing. Okay. Uh, pilot glasses. The... Uh, yep, those ones. Pilot glasses. No piercing. Tommy Bananas suit. This is our cult member, everybody. Nice. Okay. So let's just double check. Think thick tank bod. Oval head. Balding hair. Wide eyes. Roman nose. Cheese mouth. Wizard brows, no facial hair, pilot glasses, no piercing, Tommy Banana suit. Good. Name that dad. Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett with two two Fs and two T.
That was a strange sound effect that just turned up. All right. Be Welcome to the Margarita Zone. If you're here, you found that one secret path that you have to work really hard to get. If you're pretty, if you're clear, you're clearly pretty clever. So since you've already met all of the conditions, we'll let you skip straight to that ending if you want, free of charge. Or you can still play through the game knowing what's at the end of, end to get the entire story. If you uh, if you have no idea what we're talking about and somehow got here by accident, nothing to see here. Change your dad's center up a little. Change your name, and we'll just send you on your merry way. Give me this nightmare. We'll skip to the end. Let's see what's about to happen, shall we? Okay. Okay. Hey, we originally put this into the game because we're big horror fanatics, but cut it because before we released for obvious reasons. But then people found an old version of it buried deep within the game files anyway. We're, we absolutely acknowledge that this ending is conceptually messy, and if the existence of it sullies your experience with the rest of the game, just know that it's totally non-canonical. We made it intentionally impossible to get unless you're actively seeking it out so nobody could stumble onto it by accident. So without any further ado, here's the cult ending. Wow. Interesting. Oh, oh, what time is it? Oh, I must have been asleep for ages. What will happen now that Mary's gone? What about Joseph's kids? Mary's gone? Wait a minute, did I skip past something? What happened? What happened? Hang on. What the fuck? What happened to Mary? Just after date three, you're at the end. It means they're divorcing. You skip Joseph's other ending. No spoilers. Okay, of course. Do you have to play the whole game to find out? Okay. she They just divorced. Okay. Okay. They, so at the ending, instead of all of that, Mary divorces him and we stay together. Okay. What about Joseph's kids? And how will Amanda feel about all this? Well, we all have each other. And that's what matters. I guess time will tell. Better get up and greet the day. Wait. Uh, am I tied up? What the hell? How did I get here? What's going on? That's me. <laughs> Joseph! I can put on a different voice. Anybody! I'm back. I'm probably just dreaming. Why would there be a... A dungeon? An evil dungeon? Why would there be an evil dungeon here? This can't be real. Maybe I, maybe I had too much Twilight Rouge. I'm dreaming or something. Oh, this isn't a dream. I see someone at the end of the hall. It's just a shape. I can barely make out any features. Who's there? Can you untie me? You can try waking up if you like. I'll even pinch you if you're into that. Please, I, I don't know how I got here. I think there's been a mistake. You trust me, right? I mean, why wouldn't you? Joseph? Jesus, what is this? Are you into this kind of thing? I wish you'd have warned me. Into this kind of... <laughs> I always liked you, Jimmy. Goal-oriented. Anchored by family. So the music's cool, but it's a little loud. Let me crank that down a tiny bit. Goal-oriented. Anchored by family. The rock in a shallow sea. I had a whale of a time last night. Get it? Whale? We talked extensively about whales last night. You don't really like them. You're not in a joking mood. I get that. His voice is different. The whole situation is different. The way he's talking, it's... Dastardly. Sadistic. It can be both. Throw another one in there. Wrathful. That one's good. He talks about the seven sins! It was like, whichever one comes after sloth! <gasps> Wait. How did he... I'm very perceptive. A good listener. I heard all those impure thoughts, Jimmy, and about a married man, no less. I'm pretty sure that's a sin. Who? Who are you? I told you, I'm a cool youth minister. Have you seen my tattoos? Were you even watching me tear it up on the dance floor? You used to be a lot more fun. Well, hi. My name is Joseph. I have an alcoholic wife whose life I destroyed. Poor Mary. And that kids. Joseph laughs. 
My kids. Those aren't my kids. Well, they are my kids in a way. Cosmically. I guess you could call them vessels. And in that case, I guess that technically makes me not a dad. Whoops. Sorry to kill that little fantasy for you. Joseph, this is insane. So the whole minister thing. That's just a front for this weird sex jo Joseph starts laughing hysterically. He wipes a tear from his eye. Oh, <laughs> oh that's cute. You think this is a sex thing? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a sex thing. The safe word is Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy, there are powers at work so far beyond your understanding. The very idea I would sink to some half-baked sex game is a little insulting. All that religion mumbo-jumbo wasn't entirely false. I am a man of the cloth, just not the cloth you're thinking of. I am the conduit for something beautiful, Jimmy. Something pure, and you have the honor of being part of it. Listen, I know that sounds kind of hokey, but stick with me. I promise I'll get back to being relatably cool in a second. Where you really are is under the house, or I guess, under the houses. The houses? Are we under the cul-de-sac? Hey, deductive reasoning points for Jimmy. How did nobody notice a dungeon un underneath the town? Somebody would have had to... All dead. Everyone who figured it out, that is. <laughs> it's not a dungeon. Dungeons are for old castles and 12-year-olds. This place is... How would I describe it? Inhabiting many spaces. The betweens of the world. The gaps in mathematics. It's quite simply beyond you, I'm afraid. Just think of it as the real Margarita Zone. This is too much. My head hurts. Jimmy, ever wonder where all the wives and husbands in town went? Why everyone's an eligible single father? I just thought it was a coincidence. Nothing is a coincidence, idiot. No town in America has such a concentration of eligible willing dads. And do you want to know why? I don't know if I do, Joseph. Because of me. Because of my work. Because of my loyalty. Loyalty? You're insane! Profoundly. How many couples have I pushed to divorce? How many wives and husbands have I haunted in the dark? Wait. Amanda's father? Alex, it can't be. I unfortunately can't take credit for that one. It seems nature beat me to the punch. I don't know if that's a relief or not. But man, what if I had? The look on your face would have been priceless! Maple Bay is a psychic beacon of unfathomable power, but it requires sacrifice. It needs to feed on those deep, unquenchable pangs of anguish. And all to get those good friends of ours here, in my town, my father's town, and his father's before him, hurting for human touch, praying for the salvation of kindness. I don't understand. Of course you don't. You were out and gallivanting about, seducing all the hottest single dads, meddling in something of which you have no understanding, a greatness you could not conceive. Out there, in the dark of the sea, lies something that has been waiting to return for a hundred million years. It showed me the path to my ancient ancestors as it has shown the path to me. And I will harvest the sorrow of each dad whose life I destroy until the shame and stink of their failures has returned our eternal king to life. The fuel of a hundred thousand rank darknesses of the soul. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Just kidding. You don't get to choose. I know you're, being, you're used to being in control here. But now it's my turn. And don't worry yourself about Amanda. If you touch her. Please, Jimmy, give me some credit. Look at my pedigree. If I do my job, I won't even have to. Now if you'll excuse me, there's some other business I need to attend to. Your dear friend Robert has been awfully worried about you. I think it's about time that miserable drunk it's one last visit from the Dover Ghost! This is a nightmare. A beautiful nightmare, wouldn't you agree? All along you've been living a dream. 
Daddy. Now it's time to wake up. Oh man, this is bad. This is very bad. How long was I out? When is he coming back? How do I get out of here? A hand slips over my mouth. Don't say anything. It's okay, Jimmy, it's me. It's Mary! I'm gonna get you out of here. She kneels down and starts working on the ropes around my ankles. I gotta be honest, I didn't like you at first. I guess I did try to break up your mouth. Shh, shut up for once! Look, truth is I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for the both of us. I don't think you're a bad person, despite what you might think of me. I don't want it to end like this, not again. I raise my eyebrows at her. Come on, who do you think lived in that house before you? I don't think about it. Not right now. He's coming. Run like hell, kid! Mary finishes untying me and disappears. I have to get out of here. I bolt from the chair and run as fast as I can down the hallway outside of my holding cell. Eventually I run out of breath. I can't keep sprinting. Not with these dad knees. I check myself. All I have are the clothes on my back and this thing in my pocket. The pocket knife that Robert gave me. If I have to defend myself, this is all I have. Looking ahead of me, I can't see the end of the hallway. It bends further up there. I look back and can't even see where I started. I guess the only thing I can do is keep going and hope there's a way out on the other end. If there is another end. The hallway bends and twists. Sometimes it gets smaller to the point where I have to crawl on my hands and knees to get through. Sometimes it expands into a great cavern where I can't even see the ceiling. I see no way out other than to keep moving forward. I don't know how long I've been walking, but my body aches with soreness. I'm long past dehydration. My head is pounding. My vision is blurred. I lean up against the walls of the heart hallway for support. And yet still, here I am. I've been walking for what I think must be days. It could be weeks. Months. The exhaustion has sunk into my bones. I drift in and out of consciousness. I think I've slept, if you can call it sleep. My dreams are plagued with nightmares of being chased down this hallway. I see Joseph's kids. They hide in the shadows. They're coming to drag me back to Joseph. Oh, God, Joseph. I can see his face so clearly in those dreams. I don't know why I keep moving, why I keep placing one foot in front of the other. My clothes are tattered and my shoes have worn through. My hell is inescapable. Until it's a door. A door at the dead end of the hallway. I place my hand on the knob, seeing for the first time my gnarled fingernails and stretched papery skin. I open the door and walk through. I'm in my house. How did the- Dad! Amanda rushes into the room, wrapping her arms around me in a ferocious bear hug. Where have you been? Are you okay? I tried calling you like 30 times. I- uh, Amanda! What happened? Did the boat break down or something? Oh, I, uh, you know what? I'm just glad you're home. I look down at myself and my clothes there. There. My shoes are on. My fingernails aren't gnarled. I feel fine. I hug Amanda again. Nothing's ever felt as good in my entire life. I have to choke back tears of relief. Amanda, I'm so glad to see you. You have no idea. Wow, one night at sea. You didn't see a whale, did you? Poor thing. No whale could keep me from my daughter. You're damn right. You know what? You need breakfast. A very greasy breakfast. That sounds amazing. Amanda skips out of the room. This is also confusing. Was it a dream? By the way, is it okay if Emma P comes over tonight? Emma P? You know, my best friend. Oh, sure. Wait. I thought, isn't Emma R your best friend? She has red hair. You do art together. You pooped in her bed during that sleepover one time. Oh, right. My mistake. Teenager brain, you know? Hmm. I sit down on the couch, suddenly very exhausted. All I want is to have a big plate of hash browns with my daughter by my side while I quietly work on my word jumbles. I reach over to the coffee table and grab my trusty book of jumbles. This is... This is a crossword puzzle. I stare at it for too long. Hey, Amanda. Amanda pops her head in from the kitchen. Working hard on these eggs, Dadtron. If you want the perfect, perfect over medium, I gotta be in the zone. When's your birthday? Why, did you get me something? No, seriously, when's your birthday? My birthday? Dad, really? Do I have to answer this? I have seen a lot of weird stuff today, Amanda. Humor me. My birthday is... It's... 
Nothing gets past you, huh? You know, I almost had you go in there for a sec. Was it the crossword puzzle that gave it away? You know, I try so hard to nail all the details. Like cooking you breakfast over medium eggs with hash browns. Come on, that's so you. And my Amanda impression? I really think I struck the landing on her irreverent yet wholesome tone, the whole manic pixie dream daughter thing. Should have been a Broadway with these chops. I feel like you're not appreciating how much work I've put in here. Cracks begin to form along the walls around me. I look down and see the floor collapsing in tiles. As the walls crumble, I see what I truly am. Almost got away, huh? Don't know how you got out of those ropes. You're a crafty one, aren't you? Mary. Oh, right, Mary. She's rocking the tag team with you, isn't she? Funny. Here I was thinking marriage was about trust. You know, I thought I was going to take care of Robert. But now here you are, trying to make your little escape. And honestly, Jimmy, you're just killing my whole timeline here. Wait. Robert. As quick as I can, I pull his folding knife out from my pocket and lunge for Joseph, throwing all my force into him. Joseph knocks the knife out of my hand. It skitters across the room. Oh, man. Jimmy. I thought we were cool. I thought we had a thing here. What happened to Margarita Zone? Well, sorry, bud. I guess I'm gonna have to do you dirty. Doing you dirty means I have to kill you. Joseph wraps his hands around my neck, smiling as he tightens his grip. What's wrong? You were so into this last night. I have no strength left to fight him. This is it, isn't it? The world goes quiet around me. All I can think about is Amanda. I miss her so much. I'm sorry, Amanda. I love you more than anything. Please be good. <laughs> oh! Joseph's eyes go wide. He releases his grip on me and I gasp in air. <gasps> he turns around. It's over, Joseph. Honey, sweetie, you... stabbed me. You stole so much of my life from me. Joseph backs away from Mary, clutching the wound on his shoulder. Sweetheart, we can work this out. I'm done with you. Father? <gasps> Chris peeks out from the doorway behind Mary. He looks different. Behind him are Christian, Christy, and Krish, who all creep into the room. Father, we're so hungry. Won't you feed us, Father? Mary turns to me and holds out a hand. Hey, sailor. It's time to go. The children corner Joseph as I crawl to Mary, who pulls me into the hallway. I look back into the room at the horror I'd escaped. It, it's... The more I look at it, the more it seems to break my mind. I turn away, my head pounding. This body is a conduit, Mary! I'll see you in your nightmares! Who's this? My eyes open and I shoot up in bed, grafting, grass gasping for air. Dad! Amanda leaps off the chair in my room and attacks me with a hug. Amanda! This is the best hug of my life. I was so worried about you. So happy to see her again. Wait. Amanda, what's your birthday? Dad, did you forget again? Hmm? It's March 22nd. I'm a record player and we had, I, and we had an ice cream cake at the beach. I dropped the ice cream cake and got sand all over it. Remember? I... I remember that. Panda... I missed you so much. What, what happened? You don't remember? The yacht sank. The rescue crews had to pull you out of the water. That was a few days ago. Where's Joseph? They found something in the yacht wreckage. Some documents showed that he was embezzling funds from the church. Nobody's seen him since. There's a, det there's a detective here who's been wanting to talk to you. He's nice, but he's drinking all of our coffee. Let me go grab him. Wait. Yeah? Amanda, I love you so much. I love you too, Dad. Amanda skips out of the room, and in a moment, Mary enters with, yeah, Who's this guy? The guy I saw in the hallway. Rise and shine, bucko. Mary, are you okay? You know, it was a real shame what happened to Joseph. I had no idea what he was doing to the church. I can't believe he ran once the feds showed up, leaving me to take care of a four beautiful children on my own. 
but don't worry. I'm staying with my parents out in the Midwest till this all blows over. Mary stares at me, waiting for me to say something. Good answer. What voice do I give this guy? He sounds he sounded British in the little voice clip we've got. Glad to see you both got your story straight. I'm happy you're okay. I was worried about you. Thanks, Mary. Mary cracks a smile before turning and leaving my room. Take it sleazy, fellas. Once the door closes, the man pulls up a chair and sits next to my bed. You don't know me. I know a lot about you, Jimmy. Keeping tabs on this for a while. Who are you? Graves, Detective Saul. <gasps> Saul! Uh, better call Saul! <laughs> I'm not going to be able to take it fucking serious. There's a strange and mysterious force. There's strange and mysterious forces at work here in Maple Bay. What you saw down there, we both saw down there. I don't know if I'll ever be able to forget it. Well, I get the feeling that you won't be able to either. It's my job to get to the bottom of it. So what does that mean for me? It means to live your life like none of this ever happened. Go be happy. Here's your daughter. Go fall in love. Be well, Jimmy. Saul walks to the door of my bedroom but stops. He turns to me. And I know it's hard to raise a kid as a single parent. Even I lost my wife under mysterious circumstances. Ah. Barry and I have been on our own for a while now. There's one thing I've learned about through learned through all this. So us dads have to help each other out. I think I got it right. Get some rest. But if you're not doing anything later, maybe you can give me a call. Complete the secret ending. We did it. We escaped the margarita zone. What the fuck? Yeah, where's the soul root? Why can't... Why, what, is Saul not going to be unlocked as an optional character? He seemed nice. What the fuck is going on inside those Game Grumps' heads? Huh? The fuck are those Game Grumps thinking about? No, but seriously. Very interesting. Um... <laughs> Dream. Very interesting that this was going to be the original ending before they changed it. I can definitely see what they did, because in a game like this, um, pulling the rug out from under people, even if, let's be honest, this is very interesting, right? Very interesting direction. Pulling the rug out from under someone who genuinely was enjoying hanging out with Joseph, I feel like is a bit mean compared to the tone of the rest of the game. But very fun that that's just sort of hidden in there, you know? Yeah, is there no soul root? Come on. Yeah, yeah, thank you for the 20 gifted. And Gene, thank you for the super. Worried it would come across homophobic. That, uh, that definitely makes a lot of sense. Given that it seems like, yeah, you, yeah, it's like the alternative to a man who's been pressured by his environment to be straight his whole life. Suddenly discovering himself and realizing that he's gay results in what? Cult activity? I definitely get, like, the worry. And I think they made the right choice. Like, St Joseph's ending, while a little unsatisfying, does make sense in the grand scheme of things because his kids make it different. Um, and considering they all have to live close, it kind of just, it's a messy situation and it's difficult to know how it ends. And it it's reasonable, right? Um, it's a shame the there's no sort of happy ending for everyone. Um, but... I'm glad that this was in there because that was fucking fascinating, honestly. I'm really glad I got a chance to to VO a little bit at the end there. That was that was a lot of fun to do. Dad Rector's cut. We did it. We escaped from Joseph's mind palace. I guess. Yay. What the hell? Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Kendra. This game is so crazy. I love it. Good job, folks. First ending gave us a good amount of brain rot. True, true, true. Now, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed both endings quite a bit. I think the first ending, is, I would have preferred something happy, like I said. You know, it's nice to imagine a world where someone who's already, you know, already so locked down because of what I can only imagine is an environmental difference. You know, the way he was nurtured. It would be nice to live in a world where it would be possible to change course suddenly and for everyone to be happy. But especially since he has kids and a wife, you know, these kinds of things are always messy in reality, you know. Um, and it's it's it, and it's definitely a true reality for a lot of, at least, you know, 
I don't know if I can speak to speak to anyone's experience, but it seems like the kind of thing that would happen to a lot of people and would be very crushing for someone who makes a discovery about their own sexuality too late. You know, they missed what it would have been like to grow up and to embrace those feelings while they still had the chance to choose what happened in their lives. And, you know, it would be nice if we could live a little bit of fantasy in that, but I think that this game is, even though it's posited as a very fanciful, like, happy experience, it still does go along the path of pure realism a lot of the time. Even though these characters are larger than life, the stories that they tell and the characters that they embody are very believable and they're very much affected by real world um, issues. You know, there's no magic happy ending where everyone can just write off their problems and we can all we can all love each other in some giant polycule. It, you know. It's it's trying to be sort of mature in a way, and I think it works, even if it's a little crushing at times. You know, I'm very impressed with how mature the writing is in a lot of ways. Dro, thank you very much for the super. Shako, Maruilin, Rebecca, thank you so much. Chilo, thank you so much. And Usagi Niku and Puff. Hope you take out the Robert Tidbit when you're free. Implications about him and Joseph. Oh! Mm. Considering R Robert is also, you know, the man version of a womanizer, a manonizer. I'm not surprised that if Joseph is a serial cheater that they kind of got it on at one point. Lily, thank you very much for the super. No margarita zone, no. What we learned from today, Robert, yeah. All of you were like, no, Robert's a red flag. Meanwhile, we could have been off, we could have been getting off with cult leader Joseph. Luna, thank you. Chun, thank you very much. Sao, Adedede, thank you very much. And Yumi Elsa, thank you so much. Will I play the other dad roots? I'd kind of like to. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with this game, so I'll see how I feel about it. Um, next time, next week, I'll see how I feel about continuing uh, with one of the different routes. This game is a, is, is is a lot of fun, and I enjoy and I enjoy the the voice acting a lot. I enjoy the dialogue a lot. Like it's good, fun dialogue to read. You know, fun. Thank you very much. I'm glad you I'm glad you liked it. I was feeling pretty proud of it. Thank you so much. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for the suit. Yeah, I think next week if I come back, probably Hugo. And then if I have time, Damien, probably. Those are the two that I'm most... Maybe Hugo and Brian, because the whole thing about Brian being overly competitive is kind of interesting. Irishin Kylie Kane, thank you so much for the supers. Aniko, thank you very much. Okay, let's go back to Just Jang. Let's have a little... Let's have a little preamble. Let's have a little chit-chat, shall we? Daddy. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Lovely. Thanks very much, Mars. Glad you enjoyed the, the game. The game, such a blast from the past, and you made it more entertaining. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun today as well. When is Monkey Week? When I fucking feel like doing Monkey Week. I, it's a nice idea, but I'll, I'll save it for when I'm when I'm really feeling up to it. So yeah, that was that. Had a lot of fun. Um, I'm really interested in learning more about this game because I feel like there's going to be a lot more sort of, you know, depth hidden in all the other characters. Even the ones who, when you go through them, when you go through all of the different routes, you know, it's. I feel like the, the nature of this game is expecting one thing, but finding another. I mean, I feel like I was right about Joseph, but they didn't really go into much depth on, like, why all that is. It's just, which is nice. You know, no one needs to justify their sexuality, and no one needs to have, like, a tragic backstory that... That sort of that sort of justifies it. So it's um so it was really nice. It's really nice to play this game and just have all these characters be like you know no one needs to come out or anything. No one needs to kind of make a big deal out of it. It's just you know, it's all normal to everybody and it's pretty great. Veronia, thank you very much for the super. Seeing my Oshi love his child like this is really a pleasant thing. It's so true. Listen, this game is telling me if this game tells me nothing else, this game is telling me that I am very excited to be a dad someday. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for the super. I just hope I can avoid um, dating a married man and then being inducted into his cult. Ria, thank you for the five gifted. Oh. Sassy Leslie, thank you so much. 
Awesome job acting, uh, voice acting with Lord. Thank you so much, Necklesucker, for a sec. I thought they were making this game a meta game with that ending. I was kind of interested to see that too. When it was like, you're used to being in control, I thought like, wait, is he talking to me? You know, like Undertale Genocider is like, oh, are you the one in control right now? No, 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 the game character is alive and sentient and all that. Yana, thank you so much. Love your voice. Thank you. Thank you. I felt, I felt really, I, I was, I was having a blast. I was having such a blast with it. Okay. What's my plan for the rest of the day? Uh, I'm going to make some dinner. Oh, I, um, I, 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 so I've been, I, I kind of made a conscious decision. I was like, I'm going to invest a little bit in my own, like, you know, in my health a little bit. So, um, alongside, alongside this new water bottle and like taking creatine supp supplements and stuff, um, I have been, I went ahead and I was like, right, I've gone into a habit of ordering take, take out every single night. So what I did was, um, I, I ordered, I was like, I need to not worry about this so much. So I ordered a brand new set of cookware of pots and pans and they came in just they came in yesterday there are boxes and packaging from them all over the floor which i still need to figure out but they're really good and i've been and i cooked something last night and i was like hell yeah you know i find i feel like my sort of passion for cooking is coming back after having had a really really difficult year you know because believe it or not you know when I entered into this business, like, wide-eyed and excited to do whatever it was, I cooked for myself every night, you know, unless, of course, I was going out or, you know, other people wanted to get takeout or stuff like that. But since the start of this year, I really haven't been so lucky. Um, and I feel like now, for me, things are finally, finally starting to settle down a bit. And um, it's really nice to finally just put a little bit of that, put a little bit of the stress in the back of my mind and to be able to, you know, work on my health and work on myself in a way that feels meaningful and satisfying. And uh, I'm so happy that I've gotten to that point. So I ordered a new block of knives, some Damascus steel, which ought to be really fun. And I'm going to take care of those better than I took care of my old knives. <laughs> Pure, thank you very much for the Akasupa. Thank you for coming to the stream. Thank you so much, Mama. Thank you very much. Mafia, thank you so much. Love you too. Mwah. Jean, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm 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 the key dream daddy. They actually named the game after me. Don't worry. We we go way back. Misa, thank you very much for the super. Happy to have Yes, I've seen people have been getting the Nendo. I've I need to I need to see funny things happening. I need to see pictures of things going on that are funny. Rebecca M, thank you very much for the super. I want to kiss your pretty face. Oh, you Mary Lovely, thank you very much. And Kendra, thank you very much. You deserve a nice meal. You worked very hard. Yes. I'm not sure what I'm gonna cook tonight. Oh, I have a steak. I have a steak. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try and get in, whether I go out and get it or whether I order it in. I'm going to get some fresh thyme. I'm going to get some new cloves, garlic, and I'm going to make a steak and some sweet potato fries, just like how I used to make them. Hell yeah. That's going to be nice. Lily, thank you very much. I got shivers when you were voice acting Joseph's cult ending scene. See, that's the thing. You got to get excited about that lore project because I'm playing, I'm playing myself, obviously. <laughs> Sunny, thank you very much. You're a professional dad. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Oh, yes, me. Thank you very much. Asami, good night. Jinya, thank you so much. Mimi, thank you very much for the super as well. Night. So, yeah, I think that's going to be my day. Um, I'm still having a really nice uh, sort of... Uh, how, how big is my bottle? Uh, I made a joke about my pee pee earlier. Um, I believe it, it, it holds two liters. It holds two liters of water. So in this one bottle is my recommended daily intake of water, uh, which I figured would be good because I feel like I don't drink enough water. So I've gotten a giant water bottle and I'm just every day I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm going to do my best to drink this whole thing over the course of the day, you know, so that way I don't have to keep going down, getting new glass of water. It's just nice, big, big bottle. Mm. How many inches is that? Um... Well, you know, not too impressive. But <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Danya, for the super. Thank you so much. Nya Nya, thank you so much. Nana, thank you very much. Really glad you enjoyed it. And thank you so much. Gristle, thank you very much. Tokito, going to bed. Talk, talk to me about food. Pancakes, steak, chicken, lamb, fish, sushi, sushi, wasabi, rice, vinegar. Oh! You want it, you want it. Impulse purchase, order some food. You want to do it. Ramen, teppanyaki, soba.
Who's gonna love you, baby? Dream daddy. Who'll be? Who's it gonna be? Dream daddy. Who's gonna be your dream? <laughs> all right. I think that's a good time to sign off. Thanks very much, everyone, for all of your support today. Uh, I'm going to make plans for dinner. I'm going to have some more of this water, and then I'm going to uh, just relax. What, what are we doing tomorrow? We've got that members watch along tomorrow, don't we? Yes. In the morning tomorrow, we're going to have the members watch along. So we watched uh, Before Sunrise, which is a beautiful romance film. Um, and it has a sequel. And we're going to be watching it tomorrow at 7 p.m. JST, which ought to be good. And then in the evening, um, we're uh, at 10 p.m. JST. We're just going to chat. We're going to have a little zatsudan, and that's all. Um, I've been meaning to do... I've never really done that before. <laughs> I feel like I did that a couple times, like, in my early... In my early career, but, like... For me, whenever we do, like, a proper zatsudan, it's always, like, I have something to talk about. Or, like, I'm back from a break. Or something like that. It's rare for me to just kind of sit down and do whatever, you know. So I'm excited to see how that goes. What will we talk about? I don't know. We'll see how it all goes. Can we take a look at your new big bottle? Hey, take me out to dinner first. <laughs> Maybe. I'll think about it. Nekosaka Yubot, thank you so much. Yulia Pippers. Sunny, thank you so much. Two-year-old. You, you, you get those words out of your mouth. I'm a big grown-ass man of many, a lot older than your greatest of grandparents. Meow Bing. Kuma, thank you. Kumaki. Chen, thank you so much. Mwah. Everyone's been so lovely. Sabina, Kari, Natsuki, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you plan, do you, do, do you watch the show? How do you watch the show while watching your show? Oh, if you're talking about the watch along, um, if you don't know, that's fine. Um, so the way watch alongs work is that um, you, so it's put, so in order to make sure that, you know, there's there's like uh, legality and uh, copyright is respected, um, we I don't show the, the film or the audio on my stream. Uh, basically, I have a timer with where I'm at watching it, and then we all start our own copy of the film at the same time. So you can go on Amazon or YouTube, get your own copy of the movie, and then play it at the same time as me and then we'll watch it all together uh, and so it'll be really good and we like to talk about movies we like to have some commentary and it feels i love the watch alongs because it feels very sort of relaxed intimate and private even though there's like usually about a thousand people there it still feels private in a nice way so we'll definitely get to do that thank you uh you see huang for the super could we steal your steal my what Tenyo. what is that on august 20th what is that what are you talking about? August, what's happening on August 22nd? Huh? Can you, what does that mean? Somebody tell me, what the fuck does that mean? Can you? What, what, it sounds like August 12th, 2036. I'm, conf I'm confused as well. Oh well. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, yeah, Stella, that's the that's the one. I, someone asked me a question in Super, and I have no idea how to respond to it. I think everyone else is confused. Fair enough. Oh, I oh, I'm sorry. Well, yes, on that day, of course you can. Of course you can. It's oh, it's Valentine. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you very much for Maru 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 for the gifted. Thank you so much. Blue grin. Thank you very much. Uh, Sabina Kari, thank you very much for the gifted. And Navi, thank you very much for the super. Okay, that's going to do it for me. Uh, I really appreciate you all coming out uh, for such a surprisingly long stream. I wasn't sure how long this one was going to go for, but I was having a really, really nice time. So I'll see you all again. Thank you very much, everybody. And remember to stay safe. And I'll see you all tomorrow for um, some nice, cozy streams. And then the next day on Saturday, we're going to have... We're going to have, I don't know, thank you for the super, we're going to have the first proper RP ASMR that we've had in a long, long time. So I'm very excited to do that. And it's my first time doing bartender ASMR. I need to buy some props for that. Uh, I need to get some, like, sh some cocktail shakers and maybe a tap or something that I can say it seem like I'm pouring a beer. We'll see. All right, everyone. I really appreciate it. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.